you need to sell some of them. You're wasting all your time and money on models. Paint what you have. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Model Club TV, episode 87. As always, Scott Johansson, my lovely co-host. And I'm Jason Walker. <laughs> You're a jerk! How are you, Scott? Also known as Doom and Gloom. I, that is, yeah, D&G. D&G. <laughs> I would be Doom, and you would be Gloom. You would be dumb, and I would be... Okay. Dumber. Dumber. <laughs> yes. How are you, sir? How's life? And life's great. It warmed up. Um, and flooded <clears throat> everywhere. <laughs> Everyone in Wilmington is swimming for their life. I can walk on my deck without... Worrying about slipping and falling into pea snow. Damn and it. You, you know. need a camera out there too. There is one out there. Actually. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, did you see the video of the. Again, how are you, Jason? That would be. Oh, nobody cares. <laughs> how many times I got to tell you? Oh, it's going to be one of those. All right, here we go. <laughs> did you, but no, but did you see the video of the fire truck? Yes, I did in in, in St. Louis, spinning yeah, out, was, and take, almost taking out a house. Took that car out, and it was like just got between those houses. Oh Dang. my god! Yeah, good luck down there. Although I'm sure it's warmed up by now. So, so how are you? Uh, I'm fine, thank you. It's That's been a great. week. <laughs> That's always. Thank you for not swearing in the first seven minutes. Uh, we are here, episode eighty-seven. Please like and subscribe. I know. I'm guilty of it. I watch shows and I never hit that like button and I never hit the subscribe sometimes. So if you like or don't like, you can always just subscribe and ignore us and tell us how much you don't like us in the comments. That works too. Um, we have a discord that discord link will down be down below. We have a Facebook page, which doesn't get updated and I have to do it. Um, I posted something on there yesterday. You didn't post the episode from two weeks ago again. <laughs> Which is what you want. <laughs> oh, man. I'm yep. tired of doing it all. Okay? Oh, yeah, you're doing it all. <laughs> you sure are. So, first up, Paul Gill sent us some information today. So, it's good news. Uh, but he wanted to make sure that we uh, wished, and I was, we were going to do it anyway, uh, wish Mark Van Tyne a speedy recovery and a procedure done. And I have a picture from the hospital that just came today. So... There it is. Paul and yeah. Mark. He's in recovery uh, and looking pretty good after what he speed. just went through. Yeah, but if I woke up and that's what was looking at me, I'd be like, <laughs> put me back out. Okay. I didn't realize so, see, Paul's hair was so long. You got this reason. picture. Okay. This is the picture you got, right? Uh-huh. Okay. The picture I got, and Mark probably doesn't even know this. No, 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 no. We're not allowed to talk about it. What? He said, don't show this. Oh, I'm not going to show it. Okay. All right. <laughs> but of are course, you allowed to talk about it? He didn't tell me I couldn't. Okay. He sends me a picture of Mark's foot. Okay. And he says, so I, I don't know that I responded right or whatever. So he calls me. He says, did you get that picture? And I go, yeah. <laughs> well, what do you think? And I could now understand at Wonderfest last year, he sends me a picture of his nasty foot. Okay. For those of you, said, uh, not understanding scott has an aversion to feet and, and i said well mark's got a better looking foot than you do yours is all <laughs> knurled up like a big foot yeti and so he started laughing at me so that's all i'm gonna say about it you know mark's bright like really oh god put one of your toes in your mouth you want to make me vomit right on live? i could project Wait, really i'll try well we'll do it after the show and we might put it in at the end if it's successful if you put your toe in your mouth and start biting one of your toenails who hasn't done that? You got to get a cuticle. You got to get that. Uh, most people that aren't f***ing simians don't do you that. You just swore in the first seven minutes. <laughs> I thought we were past seven minutes. No, we Sorry. weren't. I'll have to beep that. Right, um, anyway, Mark, get well soon. Yes. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what an awesome tribute that we just gave. Yes, get well soon. Uh, speedy recovery. That's a, that's a big, big deal he went through, so... Head on over to Mark's Facebook page. I'll put a link. Send him some messages. Some well wishes. That'd be awesome. So, you ready? I'm ready. Let's we have a work. lot. So, our our guest this episode is John Diaz. 
from Jaco slash Resin Reality. Yeah, and it it's great. It was great to have him on. And so I think it's kind of all over the place. Sent us tons of pictures, so I'm kind of showing as we're talking, telling stories and stuff. So great interview. Love to have him back again. So thank you, John, for doing the show. It'll be towards the middle. We have a John's lot. John's one of the old timers, too. I yeah. mean, they go way back. So way back, way back, way back. We have a giveaway this episode, and it is from, good. yes, we do. And it is from Son of Sheer Terror Society, William Paquette's. Re- rejuvenation that Paul Gale's involved in. What do, what do we even like bringing some of Williams old kids changing a little bit, some really, really good stuff. So if you're a William Paquette fan, you're going to be excited for this. And I love Williams sculptures. They got that creepy, grotesque, awesome musculature to them. So what we're giving away is winter phase two web window. There it is. Here's some pictures. So here's the kit, the raw kit. Here is, and you'll see more of these in the gallery. We have a paint up by uh, Mr. Paul Gill here as well. And really, and it's got a little parasite coming out of his chest. So if you're into gruesome, gross stuff, this is for you. There'll be more pictures of this in the gallery. It amazes me about this. Kudos to Paul for casting. No, nope. you know who cast it? Who? Mark Van Tyne. Oh, Mark cast it, huh? Yeah, that's okay. what Paul was saying. So that's that's what I took from the messages. But continue what you were saying, because it applies both cases. Well, anyway, the casting, if that's a picture of the casting, that, that's phenomenal. And I wouldn't want to cast that piece. So, Speaking of the casting, I have one right here. Holy cow. And it's all one piece, or is that glued? It is all one piece. Except for the little parasite. Okay. That comes out of his chest. So, yeah. Talk about how difficult that is, just so people know. That that's really difficult, especially so where those holes are. Okay, understand that rubber's got to meet up on the other side of that, and you know that's not an easy thing to do that many times on a kit. Okay, especially like that hole in the side, and and it it's and I look at that and go, it's not impossible. Don't get me wrong, but this is just a phenomenal job to even get this out. Okay. And, and you know, what's funny. Like I one of these, I don't know how long a mold like that will even last because there's a lot of undercuts. And I that. hope they had a, made another like master kit. I'm sure he did because he said it was originally because William sculpts in wax a lot of times. And so the, the original was destroyed in the original molding process of it. So they'll have to remold it off a cast, I think. But I didn't even notice the base for some because I think when I've seen the buildups, there's a lot of snow. Like his leg is bent here into the snow, and looking at the details, like have actually having this in my hand and looking, and it's hard to see on the camera because the light blows it out. But like just the gross innards, there's a little worm or part of an intestine. The mouth has like a little throat hole in there that you kind of don't see in some of them. So if you're into this sort of thing, this is this is awesome, and I wow, really really nice. Really nice. So we are going to give this away. And in order to win this in the comments down below, you have to tell us what your favorite William Paquette kit is. And that's how you get entered into the drawing. So we'll give this away next episode. What's your favorite William Paquette what, what kit? What if someone guesses a kit that they think he sculpted and he didn't? Then they're not in. Because this okay. is only, this is going to William Paquette fans. So if you really like, if if you go back and look at all of his sculptures he's ever done, um, tell us what your favorite is. I think Paul's trying to do some research maybe. So help him out. Uh, I can say right off the bat, my favorite, Biostein from way back when. And then I really, and I, I need to pick this up from Paul in this is that tomb. I like the, I like the, uh, the tomb of the blind dead stuff. But is it plague zo- the plague zombies? What's that horror movie with the zombie? And it's when he had the oh my brain like broke. I watched it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm asking the wrong person. Uh, there's when he came out with the Vampirella, and he came out with the there was a like that there was that period of time in the vampire, and there was the the zombie kit that I really really liked. Um, but such good stuff. His Frankenstein's monster that he's done a few times is really cool too. They had that series of horror busts. He had that phantom with the organ pipes behind him that I really, there's some really good stuff out there. So please let us know your favorite William Paquette kit and you'll be entered 
next time. Winter phase two. And Head on over to Son of Sure Terror Society over on Facebook. The other thing you're going to get, and this is Paul explained this to me too. You're going to get this postcard. All right. But it's signed. William Paquette, WP. This is a rare item. William very rarely signs things. And so you're going to be getting this as well. So I'm going to put this somewhere safe so I don't spill tea on it <laughs> while we're recording. Because that's a possibility with my dumbass. Um, so that that's that alone is pretty cool to have. So you don't get that very often. So great kit. Please check it out. Son of Sheer Terror Society. Support some great guys. And... Wait, what is that? It's actually wrapped in bubble wrap? Yeah. Oh. Paul well, must run out of garbage bags. <laughs> He's going to kill me for that. Uh, so you perhaps. didn't ask me my favorite William Paquette piece. Oh, I am. I was just going to get there. What is your favorite William Paquette piece? Well, so this this stuff is what, what you would call his style. Okay. And his style is not normally what I would buy. Although this is a nice, this is pretty cool look, kit. But, you know, I can recognize it and say it's a great sculpt and all that. It's just not what I would buy. Right. And, and that's. And I fall into the same category with a lot of, like, I don't like a lot of superhero right. stuff, you know? So, so, but that being said, I think the first William Paquette piece that I really took notice of, and don't get me wrong, I probably heard of him prior, is the Pit and the Pendulum, the Vincent Price Pit and the Pendulum. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and, you know, that, that's more of a traditional, you know, figure kit um, thing. But I remember seeing that and that was like, that was such a perfect likeness on that. And then, yeah. So cool. So, so let's hear yours. Favorite William Paquette pieces. He almost wanted to punch me once. <laughs> can't blame him. I, I can't tell that story. I can tell part no, of it. No, not when the guy's given something to give him. No, away. no, no, no. It was a great, like, I was, it was me, William Paquette, Barsom, and Mike Falsigno in a car. Yeah, it was good times. And back yeah. then, William Don't and care. I were on different ends of the world. And he's like, and now I'm exactly where William was. So I, maybe I'll take that out. But it's, it's a good story. News and reviews, Scott. It's <laughs> a good one. Hey, you rushed oh, I, I got that one. I like that. All right, first up, <laughs> we have from Gilbert. Uh, oh, shit. I hit the wrong button. Wrong. Well, there it is. Up, up next, up first, Gilbert, Paul Gill, and Mike Calvert. Uh, we have Billy from Predator. So let me read the details. There's something out there waiting for us, and it ain't no man. We're all going to die. It gives me great pleasure to announce the second release from the Predator 1987 line of quarter scale busts, Sonny Landham as Billy Soul. Quarter scale busts sculpted by Jeff Yeager, available March of 24, limited edition. Yes, 100. Uh, price 120 plus shipping and handling. So we got Billy from Predator continuing the line. Iconic pose from the movie. Please, Scott, tell me you've seen Predator. I've seen Predator only once, and it was way back when it came out. Okay. And I didn't hate it. Okay. Okay. I mean, <laughs> it was, I, I didn't hate it. Um, this is going to, I'm going to say this, and, and you're going to laugh at me. I like Predator 2 better. Um, I think for some reason, but, um, I like predator too. I don't know why there's some people that hate on it, but they're both, I think really good movies. I don't think I don't, I, I'll sit here and say it wasn't a bad movie. It's not something yeah. that, you know, I think, and, and I don't know if John touched on this or not in our interview, but, um, I just think I'm so predatored out. Yeah. Of you the know? predator itself. This yeah. is something I've never seen. Like, they've never done Billy. No one's ever done Billy that I know of. If someone's done Billy before, let me know. This is never... Doing these ancillary characters from the movie, I don't think anyone's really ever done them because they always just go Arnold and the Predator. Like, but none of the other ones. Um, so it's, it's kind of interesting to see where they'll go with this. And I think that Jeff knocked it out of the park on this. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic sculpt. So, again, head on over to Gilbert. Link will be down below quarter scale 120 plus shipping and handling so there we have that all right up next we have and this is a jaeger army piece and i have a lot to read 
So quick update on the, this is all from Mark Worthling. Quick update on the Karloff body snatcher bust. We've been doing a test. We've been doing test castings and planning the production of this beast and are now currently casting some parts while making new molds for full production. I am making gang molds. Do you want to tell everybody what a gang mold is? Oops. A well, gang mold is where you make a mold of a piece and you cast a few of them and now you make a mold <clears throat> where like there's more than one of that piece in there so you can zip through it easier. Okay. And... Uh, for so, so the, he's making gang molds for the shovel parts and gang molds are being made for the arm as well as a second set of molds for the body and head may even have multiple base molds. All of this is necessary to ensure a rapid production rate while maintaining the highest quality. We should see a painted example of this beauty by the incomparable Saul Alvarez. I'm very excited to report that with Jeff's blessing, we had Michael Berglund take Jeff's iron gates and create a very complex design in 3d, which matches the movie still. This, the new design has all the same. I got to push buttons and read at the same. God damn it. I got to push buttons and read at the same time. I'm very excited to report that with Jeff's blessing, we had Michael Berglund takes Jeff's iron gates and create a very complex design in 3D, which mas- matches the movie still. The new design has all the same critical dimensions as the original iron gates. These will be printed in a, on a 3D printer, and there is no way I can even want to attempt to mold and cast several hundred of those pieces. Take a look at these at the pics. They came out awesome. Huge thanks to Scott Johansson for working the files and doing the prints. Take special note of that part, please. So we are very close to production casting. I apologize for the wait, but it is necessary to do it right. It'll be worth the wait. And if you're on the fence on this one, don't wait. Only 34 spots remain on the numbered edition run of 100. PM me with any questions if you want. So head on over to Pestilence Labs. Uh, I haven't been pushing buttons lately because I, now that we have the pictures up here, it's kind of hard to do both. I got a feeling you're getting ready to push some, but go ahead. Uh, Yeah, go ahead. So that's coming, everybody. Head on over. This is a Jaeger Army piece, so head on over to the Jaeger Army. Talk to Pestilence Labs. They can uh, hook you up on that, too. And Mark Worthling. So next up, this one is a Pestilence Labs piece. And I had, Scott had sent me, told me pictures about this. Told me about the pictures, but I hadn't seen them until today. So, oh, not really. Here we go. Please weasel your way into this fucking job. Who did? You did. Oh, I weaseled? Okay. Hey, Lab Rats. Thanks to Jeff Yeager, the Young Frankenstein bus line continues to grow. And we continue to follow the format of replicating the funniest scenes from the movie as best we can in quarter scale. So this is Pestilence Labs. What a great scene. So here we have the lovely Frau Blucher. Blucher, Blucker. <laughs> it's too bad. If you had a horse thing that you could press, yeah, I know. Play that. That would be great. I was. I just wanted you to yell at me the correct pronunciation. That's why I was doing that. You know what? Why don't you read this for me? Because I want to push. I want to move buttons, and it's hard for me to read and push these buttons. What a great scene! So here we have the lovely Fra Blucher. <laughs> <laughs> Supporting a nice stogie, maybe in the middle of staging the library of Dr. Victor Frankenstein in the effort to lead the young Frankenstein down a dangerous path. As with all of the busts, we have added a really cool extra to the base, expertly sculpted by Michael Berglund. We have an old style can of Ovaltine, which I saw those pictures, and it was, I never realized Ovaltine came in a can like that. No, me either. 3D, 3D printed in solid resin, and with the Ovaltine script embossed on the pressure fit lid, just like the actual can was. We have a high quality water slide decals being made by our friends in Canada, V1 decal, decals. They specialize in high quality airliner decals and do a fantastic job so we can so the can of Ovaltine will look totally authentic. That's great. He's having those 3D printed, huh? Yeah. So we're going to keep our pricing basically where, where it has been with a slight increase to account for our increasing shipping costs. Uh, it'll be a total of $115 shipping included in the U.S. Uh, inter- international shipping will be a little more. Uh, I will be contacting all of my young Frankenstein regular customers, but feel free to message me if you want to be on the list. 
and be sure to mind the stairs. They can be treacherous. They uh, sure can. Uh, P.S. The creature, the doctor, and Igor are all still available. Same price. So I'm not one to be petty, Scott Johansson. But but I'm gonna be today. So go. if we go back to the, uh, the the you know you got a special mention in that post mm-hmm. that you were doing some 3D printing work for the uh, Pestilence mm-hmm. Lab and Jaeger Army. Mm-hmm. Um, I printed those Ovaltine cans. Didn't hear a word about that. Not my name mentioned. Nothing. Let me ask you a question. How many of those Ovaltine cans did you print? 120. Okay. Was it a hard print? Yes. You're a liar. Doesn't okay. matter. Okay. Doesn't See, matter. You have to lie. See, here's the thing, though. As soon as you lie, your credibility... No, no, no. I'm not lying. It was an easy print. But okay. I, this is a, in my... my my problem with the Pestilence Labs people is that I'm keeping score. And this isn't the first time he's done this. Is that he's mentioned Scott Johansson's amazing printing abilities. And I don't get mentioned in some of the other posts. Well, maybe your printing ability. So the good. next time I'm snipping supports off uh, a microscopic tibula from a skeleton to go into a 35th scale jet. You might want to think for get Scott Johansson to print that skeleton for you the next time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Because, you know, he could do it because he's amazing at printing. I am amazing at it. But oh, have, yeah. Have you, seen, have you seen that gate? That gate. Look, that, that came out great, didn't it? You think that was an easy print? Yes, actually, I do. <laughs> wasn't as easy as your old team can. It okay. wasn't as I easy. <laughs> it wasn't as easy. as many of those. Okay. Let's go back to the fairies from last year. Let's go back to the books. The bo- a book versus a, book. A, a, yeah, book a, versus, book. <laughs> a book versus the fairies that broke every time you attempted to take it off the supports. Hey, I told you here. guys to scrap that idea. But I didn't, did I scrap it? No, I printed them. And I printed hit. that anatomically correct skeleton yesterday. Anyway. Uh, real quick, I do have the uh, pictures of the gates, the original that uh, they're supposed to look like. So I had that out of order. So they have been changed to match the movie. So there are the and gates. So you know, there's not a lot of these printed yet because. Because you proved oh, my point. <laughs> no, I'm not proving your point. So just hold on, Jack Weed. Okay. Although Michael had a measurement off the original gate and everything. I printed them, and we want to make sure they fit before I print a bulk of them. Sounds good. That's the smart way to do it. And how many Ovaltine cans did you fit on one build plate? Fifteen, because I only did it on the Saturns, because I had my other thing going for someone else. And you else. can only fit 15 out there? hmm Wow, okay. I don't feel so... Oh, I feel bad. Yeah, it was I eight prints. Do... It was eight prints. I... On the Saturn, I can do 20. Okay, no one cares right now. <laughs> yeah. All right. On the Jupiter, I can do 40 something. Up next, Nostalgic Resin Productions is back. Who's that? That is David Horvath. I know do who we, it is. Yeah, we, do we, we want to say David? David? Nostalgic Resin Productions is back, and they have their Buffalo Girls coming out. And here it is. And you now understand. I do now understand since I've seen the movie. I know what part of the movie is this from. And notice they're not wearing Christmas clothes. So, oh, and he agreed with me. He agreed with me, by the way, that it's not a Christmas movie. You want me to send him a Kong bust? I don't think so. No, this looks great. I, and I, I think he's like tweaking the final poses and stuff. And it just came out. I think I saw it before we came on. Uh, this is coming soon. And the, up next. He also called has George Lasso's the moon. Yeah. And here we have the Kolchak. Uh, he's going to be releasing a bigger bust of it. So there's a test print from it. This Looking is pretty a cool. big improvement. Yes. Uh, on the, uh, I have, on the, Oh, it's over there. I wish. Could, yeah. This is a fantastic improvement. looks a lot better. So very cool. 
And then he has a sneak peek of what's coming next. Scott, you know what it is? I believe I do. Really? You want to say? Do you want me to say? Does he want me to say? Well, I know. I think because other people were guessing online. So, yeah. Um, it's Lucille Ball dressed as Superman coming out of the window from the Lucy episode. <laughs> That's a pretty cool uh, idea. I thought it was the hunchback at first. <laughs> Because I now, saw the tights. George Reeves is he going to have the George Reeves in there too, or just Lucy? Don't know, because no one. I don't think it's officially been announced what it is. So that could be it. But I think other people were guessing that same thing. So very cool. Head on over to Nostalgic Resin Productions. Links will be down below, and we're going to keep trucking along. All right. Up next, this one is. Let me get to the pictures. And there we are. <clears throat> we have. From Gilvert. Now, this is kind of a sad story. This is what they launched Gilvert models on. And so I want to read some stuff while the pictures are there. Or you know what? Again, read. I'll push buttons. Where the heck is Judge Dredd? Um, this was supposed to be the first uh, Gilvert release. Um, Quarter-scale Judge Dredd bus sculpted by Michael White. Um, still not sure of an availability date. Not a limited edition. Price should be around $185 for the full kit with three heads and badge, etc. Okay. So, and I guess this is, uh, who is this from? Uh, who posted this? This is from Mike. Mike. This is from Mike. He okay. posted it. So Mike posted this. Hey, everyone. I had a conversation with Paul Gill today regarding our Judge Dread piece, sculpted by the fantastic Michael White, and was ironically the piece we used to promote and launch Gilbert. So some of you may be wondering where he is. Well, it's a pretty involved piece. And whilst Paul, whilst a damn Irishman, whilst Paul has started molding the kit, it's one we've kind of let others, other kits go ahead of, as it's going to be quite costly to produce. The thing is, three interchangeable heads to give you the option of Urban Dread, 2000 AD Dread, and there's even a death option with Skull Badge. We've used Peach Tree's Tower as the main base, and there's a one to one dread badge. This thing is badass, but with so few on the list, we've just held back. We are extremely grateful to all those who expressed interest previously, and those names are listed below. However, in an ideal world, to justify this going into full production, our calculations tell us 30 is essentially the magic number. So the names below are the initial people who asked to go on the list. Check and let us know if you'd still be in for the full kit. If you don't see your name and want to help us get to 30, please let us know in the comments by simply saying, I am the law. And then they posted the list. Yeah, so, so that's on the Gilbert uh, Facebook page. Yeah, it's page. over on Gilbert. If you're interested, ho get over there, get on the list. Uh, and I and I don't mean this in a bad way. Eight hundred And I'm on the list. This is I wanted this kit. So if this doesn't happen, I'm going to be sad. That being said... $185 is a lot of money for a bust. And I can see why people are dropping off. Some people came back on. But I, if you're interested, please get on over there. I think they're talking about maybe just doing one of the heads. Um, I'd be fine if they just kept it the one head uh, from the movie, the the Carl Urban head, and then offered the other ones extra if you wanted to buy them or something. So I, I, I think like they, how they have the stand for the other ones. Yeah. And they have a, yeah. So if you wanted to go all in with that stuff, great. But, I really want to see this make it into production. I it's I if you have not seen this movie, it's one of those I didn't see it till it was at home. Scott, I, I highly, highly recommend this movie. It was made for 3D, like when 3D was big in the theaters there for a little bit. And it's a really, really good movie. And mm. uh, don't even yawn, because it's good. Right. Friday, it, it's late day at pizza. <laughs> so please, I if it get on the list. It might not come back out. And I was one of those people wondering where it's been and it's, it'll be sad if it doesn't make it out. So ugh. anyway, that's a, that's a sad story. Please get over there. Let's make this thing happen. Maybe they could get the price down somehow, but I, I get it. It's tough. Money's money's tough. Well, these days. You know, you, you get there with that $185 and you say, that's a lot. You know, I get the Herman Munster, it was 200 yeah i just got the johnny ringo from sweet life and it was 175 okay and and 
you know, where I'm at in life too, I, I kind of second guess some of these purchases. But when I take them out, even though they're missing the right arm, uh, <laughs> my Johnny Ringo is missing a piece, but they're taking care of me. It's on the way because I know they're good for it. But just one of those things that happens. But it was funny because I almost opened it on the show. <laughs> and it would have been so funny. I was like, hey, yeah, well, hey, well hey, I got the special edition, the no armed one. No wonder, no wonder he lost a gunfight. Um but no, that I just that's that's a joke. Those guys, first of all, that was a great kid. I they're beautiful. The stuff they're putting out. And it's beautifully cast and my spare parts in the way. So it's it's not a big deal. But um the point I'm making is when you get these things in your hand, they're huge, man. I mean, quarter scale bust is, it, it's a good yeah. size bust. So, and let's face it, none of us are getting like better eyesight. So the bigger, the better when it comes to painting. Yeah. Um. So the, yeah, it's, and, um, but, but I, and I think I'm not saying it's too much money for what you get. Thing it's a lot of money for the way the world is right now. Like a lot of people have to make some choices. So, you know, it's tough. And it's a great piece. It's so good. It's so good. And please, if you have not seen the Dread movie, oh, it's one of the most violent, awesome movies that's come out in a really long time. All right, up from our buddy, well, winner, just posted this today. I had a little sneak peek since I'm on the Patreon, but. Mm -hmm. Speed Racer. Dude. This is really nice. Um, I saw the parts breakdown too. Yeah, and then I put this together last night before the parts breakdown stuff came out today. So, um, wow. The only thing that worries me is he may have to cut that road up because... Um, oh, look, there she is. Wait, wait, wait. Depending on how big you want to do it. Oh, look, a dog. Trixie! Hi, oh, baby. Sick balls, Trixie. She's not your mom. Anyway, um, <laughs> well done. Just so fast too. It just boom. Ah, it just pops right so out. So good. It's so like, good. Um, I like the force perspective. I love the force. I love that it looks like that's it. And um, I don't know if the speed is a little tall looking, but maybe I don't know. But it's still cool. It, it's. Yeah, no, it's really, really cool. And for those of us that have some die casts of the Mach 5, um, you can get this piece and print your Speed Racer to go next to it. And yeah. Shrink it down. Cool so, um, yeah. That's a good but, idea. Uh, and then I asked him today if uh, there was going to be a Companion Racer X piece, and he said yes, so that'll be cool. Excellent. Let's see how smart Jason is. What's Racer X's car name? I have no idea. What was the number? No idea. You suck. I wasn't a big Speed Racer fan. Really? No. Yeah. No. I was more like when this was on. It was uh, Battle of the Planets. I was more of a Battle of the Planets kind of person. So I because I, I wasn't this, into cars. I, like I didn't like. I'm not. I just saw it as a car thing, and I don't care about cars. I showed, this but to I my still wife. think this is really really cool. Yeah, I showed this to my wife this morning because she grew up same era that yeah. I did. And she said, I mean, she goes, oh, that's really cool. It looks kind of anime. And I go, Speed Racer was anime. Yeah. Now, I don't know if it was the first anime, but it was maybe our first. It was one anime. of the first that came over the seas, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, continuing yeah. the Dungeons and Dragons line. Oh, what? That's, I was wondering if that's what that was from. I yep. So this is, one, this is the Orc General from the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon. So continue like this is just keeps going and, and you're going gonna have forward. a big giant dungeon i know i don't know where this is gonna go so we have that here's the park breakdown in the back of it and then we're we gonna have to print them smaller yeah yeah, yeah. we have uh avengers horse nightmare is there we got the horse so man wells firing on all cinder cylinders lately this is just fantastic stuff well, i'm got telling me i got a horse sometimes but anyway um what'd you say your mom tells me i got a horse sometimes. oh, oh. <laughs> Or I'm like a horse or something. I don't know. Smells like yeah. a horse. <laughs> All right. From our good buddy, Scott, do it while Mike, I push buttons. Mike Swistak. I hope I didn't butcher that. Um, at Cthulhu Hazard, Cthulhu Gizzard. Gizzard, jeez. Um, 
two versions of his new quarter scale Frankenstein skull relief are now available at his Etsy store, CthulhuGizzard.etsy.com. Frankenstein skull relief measures approximately three and a quarter inches tall by one and three quarter inches wide and one and three quarter inches deep. Frankenstein skull with spine and neck bolts relief, which measures approximately five inches tall by two inches wide and one and three quarter inches deep. Um, he sent I, us a link, which yeah, Jason will post. It. I'll put all that um, directly to the Frankenstein skull with spine and neck bolts. I love his original takes on things. So again, head on over to Mike's stuff. Uh, there's another thing we got here coming in a second, but really, really yeah, cool. He, thing. He's got those are fun. Yeah, those are super fun. those are fun for sure. And then up next, from Fire in the Sky, we have the alien from Fire in the Sky. Wow! Also available on the Etsy store, CthulhuGizzard.etsy.com. It's quarter scale and measures approximately six inches tall by three and a half inches wide and two and a quarter inches deep. This is an unpainted casting cast in a light flesh color resin inspired by the movie Fire in the Sky, the Travis Walton abduction story, traditionally sculpted, pressure molded, and cast by Mike Swistak of Cthulhu Gizzard at Cthulhu Gizzard Customs. True story, by the way, for those that... <laughs> follow those types of things uh again i he takes he takes the original and then puts his little spin on it like there's a little twist in it i really really cool stuff that mike does so please check him out great guy him and squid great people up next i don't have anything for you to read but we have prototype pieces from stan art's jaws from the bruce the shark pieces so scott if you want to kind of just talk while i push buttons here a little bit but well i believe is this going to be completely 3d yes right? i think so okay. and they're going to be available on different scales that i don't know I thought or maybe not i thought i read that somewhere she'll let us know because she's awesome but i wanted yeah i wanted people to kind of see so this is our uh friend david stan at stan arts and i i like how he's got the two halves of this with keys like a plastic model kit it it's amazing to me and that's the first time i've seen it yeah um so this is bruce the shark from jaws the mechanical shark and um i know david he's done a crap ton of research on this <laughs> and um yeah this is a nice piece i don't know what the price is yet i don't know if they've named yeah i don't the think they've figured yet. out the price yet they but, may have but there's a lot to so it. quick story i hope she doesn't kill me for telling it so she was, um, she wanted a King Kong bust for me. <laughs> One of the few people that wanted a King Kong bust for me. And, um, so she wanted to send me money. And of course I said, no, you're not sending your money's not any good here because they've been good to the show and, and stuff, you know? So I sent it to her and, uh, she was telling me how she, um, was going to start uh, learning how to clean things up and stuff, you know, and use the the, the um, washing gear and all that stuff, you know. And I said, uh, well, I hope you don't like uh, painted fingernails because that ain't going to happen anymore. <laughs> 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 and uh, I believe uh, that may have changed your mind. But then I told her, you know what, just buy gloves that are bigger than your hand so you don't cut them when you yeah. put them on and as long as you keep your fingernails out of the alcohol and stuff you should be okay yeah so, uh, no that's a that because when i first saw those original pictures we were like oh man this is gonna be cool and here it is it's, mm -hmm. it's coming around all right so um yeah it's um and again i can't stress and, and, you know, I think John touched on this, too, in the interview about someone's wife. They talked about how supportive they were of this person. Yeah. And I can't think of anyone's wife more supportive of what he does than Laura Stan uh, supporting David Stan. Yeah. It's good to see. There's good she people just, like that out yeah, there. Yeah. I, I mean, she really just fully supports him and loves what he does and loves a lot of the people she's met and these are good nice people 
Okay, that's and I I've spoken to Laura once on the phone. A, a she quickly hang up on you, or was it like no, okay. no, she's not your mom. Okay, yeah, she, she does hang up on you. You're right. Well, she does. She says, "Meet me here," and boom, hangs up. <laughs> but um, so it's um, but it just she's as nice on the phone as as she is online. I told them even if they don't want to get a table at Wonderfest, they should just go. Just yeah, to they get should come hang out. Experience under their belt. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so we'll see. But um, great people, great peace. Uh, man, I wonder if we could get him on. That'd be cool. He doesn't. He, he seems like he doesn't do a lot of stuff like that. So I'd love to have them on, or even have her on talking about him. We could do that. That's there fine. We go. Give me a stitch. <laughs> can make right. her drink like three margaritas beforehand. <laughs> uh, we have from Joe Ludotti, uh, the famous 1964 World's Fair Brontosaurus, latest in his series of replicas from the life-size dinosaurs produced for the Sinclair Oil Corporation by Jonas Studios. This Bronto model kit is 33 inches long and sells for 200 bucks plus Jeez. shipping. If you're interested, send him a PM or email at uh, I think I'll put all the info up down below. Uh, if you remember our interview with Joe, he talked about these and how much of a, when he saw these at the world's fair, how much of a like impression they made on him. So it's kind of cool to see like that. He's actually sculpting the, the dinosaur. So I have the picture of the, here's the kit. And if you're like, this is what dinosaurs look like when we were kids, you know, like the old style, slow plotting, well, and they don't even call them brontosaurus anymore. It's a patasaurus right now. now, yeah. Yeah, you know, so. And so here's the uh, here's the other two. We have a Triceratops and a T-Rex. And then here is what it looked like at the World's Fair. So you can see the likeness is like, it looks just like it. And then here is where it is now, uh, currently residing. So really cool stuff. Head on over to Joe. I'll get those links up down below if you're interested in that. I think that's a cool so piece to have. What's funny is this all happened well before you were born. Yeah, 10 years before I was born. So these things went on tour around the country. And I don't know where we were. We were probably at my aunt's house, who, um, by the way, would have been 98 today had she um, ah. lived. But. Um, that I used to go help take care of yeah, you know, uh, yep. the last 10 years of her life. So anyway, we were prying the way home from there because it was on Cicero Avenue. And it was right by Ford City Mall. Cicero and what? Cicero and... Uh, Ford City Mall, wherever that is. What is that, 90 fit? No, Ford City's closer to like 79. 79th and uh, Cicero, all right. Yeah. Over by there. Over by there, yeah. Anyway... um. So I remember stopping. It was nighttime, but I remember stopping. And if I recall right, and it was Sinclair that put him out, um, I got some kind of little green plastic, you know, of this. Nice. Um, that you bought there, that my parents bought for me. But I remember getting out and checking these out. How old were they, you in 1964? Very, so, well, this was 64. The World Fair is where they yeah. were. Okay. So I think they started making the rounds maybe in 66. So I was probably around three when I saw. Them. Oh, that's cool. If I was younger, then that's probably my earliest memory of anything. Wow. See, okay. that's a big, like, if I saw those as a kid, holy yeah. crap. So that would probably be one of my earliest memories of anything. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Up next is something uh, I think it'll be. This is for our people over in England, across the pond. So these are all, if you're, and uh, shipping is killer right now, but I wanted to give them a highlight because it, it came up a couple episodes ago and we're finally squeezing some things in here. So Holy Grail kits, we have a bunch of stuff and I just grabbed some things from their page. Uh, check them out. They have some great sculptures, great things going on. So Holy Grail kits, I'll put the link up down below. Uh, here's some of their, again, those are in pounds. We have some Picard, some, I, I really like that Trek piece. Um, uh, with Spock and Kirk, yeah, yeah, it is yeah, really nice, nice little tribute bus like that. Bright Age area looks good too. Yeah, and then what else we got? We got Pinhead, the Prey Ponter, Jerry from Fright Night, some really cool like '80s horror, '60s, '70s horror and stuff. So, really, really good stuff. 
Holy Grail kits. Check them out. We'll have the link up down below. We can maybe, you know what? Maybe we'll have them on one day. Get some people from across the pond and talk more about how things are in England when it comes to garage kits. So check them out. Some really cool stuff. And then I have. Oh, wait, I forgot one slide. Of Gustav, Peter Cushing, and Madeline Collinson. So wait. Blur like that out for the boobs. Yeah, we might be in trouble for the boobs. But really nice stuff. Really, really nice set of busts. That pinhead's awesome. It sure is a nice like, set of busts. <laughs> you're so weird. <laughs> that pinhead is fantastic. And the Jerry's really. Did you see Fright Night? Come on. Oh, God damn it. Oh, uh, I. This is uh, the only 3D print thing I want to talk about real quick um, that I know uh, for me is I, I signed back up on Kuton. So I'm not on the merchant tier again yet, but I probably will be. So if anyone's interested, but uh, this came out and I think this is freaking glorious. Uh, Salome, uh, it's meant to be sort of uh, Arabic. Uh, uh, not Arabic. Yeah, Arabic in a way. And uh, I just love this sculpture. And his renders are getting just beautiful his paint jobs so this is one thing that just came out today uh if you're interested head on over to kuton he does amazing stuff but i did want to show this that came out it's something i've always i think someone did once but no one did it this well and it is akasha from queen of the damned and it's Aaliyah who died in a plane crash because she wanted to put too many bags on the plane um so don't do that when they say don't do that um but this is from one of my favorite books and they, they turned it into a movie. The movie was garbage. So I kind of want to paint this to look like how she's described in the book with more like marble alabaster skin. So really cool pieces from Kuton. Check them out They're on beautiful. Patreon or CG Trader. What's that? They're beautiful, I said. Yeah, I mean, gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. This is just... See, and this is, this is Persian. That's the word I was looking for. More Persian-like feeling Persian. to it. And just... Who put their cools out of my flow? Remember that? That's about Persia road from Persia from trading places. <laughs> um, man. And then the other three. So oh, go I ahead. I want to go back to this Queen of the Dam. Yeah. Okay. Just looking at it. Okay. And this is where I, I'll just briefly touch on this because we we beat it to death. But a lot of people that get on three D printing, sculpting, say it's not what clay is. Okay. And in a lot of cases, it's not. But in a case like this, this is as good as any clay piece. And and frankly, if you had to sculpt this in clay and or cast it, okay, that headpiece on her. Yeah. Stuff like just, so it's, again, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to be doom and gloom that you always are, but I'm going to say there's room for both. Look at that. There is room for both. So. This thing's just beautiful. And then from Vengeance Studios, they got a lot. They've just changed their tiers. I got some clarification with them today, which was awesome. Um, so there's a lot. They're offering some more stuff with their tiers, and it might the price went up a little bit for some people. But they had this come out today, and I'm surprised that there isn't more of this. Because with the age bracket, why isn't there more Elvis kits? Like. So if you're interested in Elvis, I I probably have access to this here in a little while. If you're interested in one, let me know. But oh. uh, or if you're interested in printing your own, head on over to Vengeance I'll, Studios. I'll answer your question. Do people hate Elvis? There's people that are Elvis no, freaks. But don't, you know, there are people that are Elvis freaks. So the monster craze kind of came in the 60s. And Elvis came a little before that. So you might have just enough of a gap. A gap. There. And I'm not saying there's not monster kids that loved Elvis. Yeah. But there might be just enough of a gap there. Because you, you know what else you don't see? I'm surprised you don't see more Beatles stuff. Yeah. Okay. I, and really more rock band stuff in general. But if you do go look, you, you can find some. Some of it's really shitty, though. Okay. But, you know, I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. So, so yeah, Ven head over to Vengeance Studios, head over to Kuton Patreon. Uh, it's there's some really good stuff over there. So that's it for uh, news and reviews. I have nothing to review as far as I know. I haven't gotten anything. But did you get anything in the mail? 
Yeah. Well, I got my Johnny Ringo, which I'll say was, you know, we showed last yeah. time. It it's beautiful. So, so it's, someone in the comments wants a a real unboxing of that moon suit video by itself. So I'm if sure you get it's... if you get a chance, I'm sure it'll be right behind the balsa foam video. I told them you'll be working on it. After the big balloon. So. <laughs> All right, workbench, Scott. What have you been working on? Well, I've been working on printing. Oh. So, as everyone knows, I have my small Kong bust that is six inches tall and I'm selling for $50. Let me pull and up pictures. I, um, I printed one bigger for. How a, tall is small? So people know. The small one is six inches from the bottom of the okay. base to the top of the head is six inches. Okay. So the one next to it, the bigger one on the right, is obviously bigger. I want to say it's closer to nine inches. Um, that's good size. So the small one is still 50. And the large one, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it out there right now. It's going to be $85. Okay. That, that seems fair. Go up. That, that price could go up. But um, use the... Right now they're, there's only one of them out there. But uh, if you message MCTV to you, you get that $85 price. Yes. They saw it on the show. Or if you email Mile Club TV yes. about it and he forwards it to me, yeah. it's the $85 price. And the other one is still 50. And then next up is my Aurora scale. Wait, before you do that, I want to show mine. Oh, because you printed yours? Oh, you I printed, printed a tiny one, but I've painted it black, so it's very hard to see right now. So I, I took your file and did it because I wanted something tiny to try and do. Mm -hmm. And the you can't see the teeth anymore. It's so, because I painted it. Well, you could when you turned them sideways against your head. <laughs> no, I mean, because of the yeah. silhouette. Was yeah. There. So it's it was that sideways. big. I just wanted to see if I could do it. And it, and it printed fine. So I like that. So if you want a real small one, we, we I, can I, alter yeah, the size. Talk to I Scott. I'll just give him to Scott. He'll send them to you. If you want so. a tiny one, I'll probably do it for like. 10 bucks or something. I don't know. No. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. that expensive. So anyway, um, so we also have where we showed uh, Rob Madison painted up and printed a um Kong, the Aurora style, the Aurora scale Kong of my big Kong. And I'm gonna offer this as a little bigger kit too, like at 12 inches. This thing measures in at eight. Okay. And it's the same size as the Aurora Kong, as you can see in the photo. I don't have a price on this yet. Okay. I'm guessing. Give a range where you're going to be. I'm, I'm hoping to be in the 110, 120. Okay. Okay. And that does not include shipping. Um, It is a 3D print. It's printed hollow. With the exception of the teeth. Um, everything's printed hollow. And very well cured and everything you know uh not a lot of cleanup on this there was a, a debate on the nameplates you, would you decide on doing all three yeah, or one just, you're gonna get all three nameplates so. okay cool you'll get all three and if someone wants the one nameplate because i did have one request for the film strip nameplate by itself um yeah i can make those for you if someone wants one so. okay cool very cool uh and contact us contact me on facebook or send it to model club tv at gmail yeah i can forward it to me yep uh i went back and started kept working on my godzilla that i've been trying to do some osl lighting on and i'm not ready to post any pictures yet so i'm trying to do it under lit like there was an explosion over here and it's turning out okay i think so i'll get pictures up next episode i think i'll be done with it so i, I want to do a better i want to do a different base if George, and this is a meme. George is probably going to get mad at me and, and whatever. And I know he uses these bases like as a standard, but mm. I don't like, please don't get mad at me. <laughs> I don't like how it, it, to me, it should be centered like this over it mm -hmm. instead of like that hanging off the back because there it centers his face. And I get why, like from the front, it looks good, but from the side, I just, so I think I'm going to put it on a different plinth and move it. So it's, and people look at my Kong bust, it sits on the base at an angle, and that is the way it sits. It's keyed yeah. down. 
you could change it if you want. It'd be a little bit of work, but you could change it yeah, if you, you want. Could. I kind of like the way it looks. And don't throw that face out because let's print a little Kong and put it on there. We'll give it to George. Um, <laughs> yeah, could. Wait. So, uh, yeah, you go a little bigger. You print, yeah. print it a little Do bigger. A little bigger. Yeah, totally. Be so, fun. Cool. So that's what I've been painting. And then I just, again, I have a lot of print jobs for people. So All I right. saw something today. And I don't know if you saw it. And I don't know if it's different. What is that company? Army Painter? Yeah have their own wet palette coming out already i did a review on their they have a do they have a new wet palette coming out well i don't know it's got like cups for paint and it's uh i have no it's not out yet because it's saying february oh so they must have updated their wet palette all right um because up until recently locked in this drawer down here that's been that was my their army painter one was my favorite wet palette until I got the game, uh, so game it's going one. to a, um, shit, did I save it? Let's see. Oh, I did save it. I don't have time to put more pictures. In. No, I'm just saying, if you yeah. wanted to go look at it, it's war gamers edition wet palette. Okay. We'll check it out. I did not and see they were uh, coming out with a new one. That's kind of cool. Although I'm yeah. loving since we could do a little on the, my exemplar wet palette. Remember, I was saying I had mold problems with it sitting, and ever since mm. last year, a year ago, I got the corner, the copper corner weights, no mm. mold at all, and I've had that thing closed for months. It's still wet, no mold. So those things have helped a ton. So these have what they call an anti-mold hydro foam. Yeah, see, even with that, because I, I have that, I have a bunch of those foam pieces, and even okay. with that, I was still getting some mold, mm. but. The the copper corners from Game Envy have like fixed it. You well, could even I, if you have I, your own wet palette, you could go buy their copper pieces and put them on there, and it they have worked like worked. Well, I, I was looking at this wet palette. What struck me about it is so it's a wet palette, but it's got this like piece in it too, where you can put paint in all these cups. Like it's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Like thirty of these little indentations, you can put paint in. To uh, okay, I wish it. you would have brought this. <laughs> and you know what? I meant to send it to you. Yeah, we'll show it next episode. We'll bring it back in. We did um, it. Oh, but, um... I did print one other thing. This, if you're, if you do use a lot of Citadel paint, they have a you. Their paint pots have that. Like they never want to stay, and they have this lip. I found uh -huh. a print on Thingiverse that you put it in and I printed it. You put it in here and you hook the lid underneath and it keeps it held open so that you can kind of dip and brush, wipe your brush on that part of the lid instead of going all the way in. Oh, okay. And it works great. It works perfect. And it doesn't, your bottle won't tip over trying to get in there, which we all know I have a problem with dropping stuff. So, all right, that's the workbench interview. John Diaz, resin realities, Jayco. Here we go. Uh, you want to introduce him? You want to say some? No, just uh, here's John. Here's Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Enjoy the interview. We did. I think it was a great conversation, and we'll check back after. Hello, everybody. We are back with John Diaz of Resin Realities and Jayco Fame. How are you, What's sir? Up? Hey, guys. How's things going? Going very well. Great to be, great to be here. <laughs> great to have you. This has been a long time in the making, I think since we first started you're one of those guests who were like we got to get john on at some point to do yeah. this so thank you for joining us absolutely man so for Sorry people for so <laughs> <laughs> that's okay i trust me we know how things go uh for people who don't know you we're going to kind of go through history at where you've been how you started all that kind of stuff sure. and just and then for your like john sent us a ton of pictures so i'm going to kind of pepper them throughout as we're talking as i'm pushing buttons uh and We'll kind of hit on a few that you want to talk about, but I'll just kind of go through there. But there's a lot of really cool stuff. Um, how did you get into Garage Kids, John? <laughs> what was? Uh, you know, when when I when I was young, I did the kits. I liked the I liked the Aurora kits, but I was more into the. Uh, I had some of the famous monsters, but I was more into the dinosaurs. You know, I liked the prehistoric scenes line. How old are you before we get so we can kind of place 57. you? Okay, 57. so you're. Older than me, younger than Scott, so you're in between the yeah. two of us. Okay. Yes. So you're still an Aurora kid. All right. He's not in between. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, 
one of my first memories of Aurora Kiss I, I bought was there was hobby stores right around like a couple of blocks away from where I live. And I where'd saw you grow up? Where'd you grow up? Where where'd you grow up at? I'm from New York, Bronx. The Bronx. All right. There was a lot of hobby stores back in the seventies back there, early seventies and stuff. And uh I saw the creature from the Black Lagoon in the store and somebody had it built up at the local hobby store. I was like, I gotta have that. And uh, I think I was, I'm going to say six. And I went into my, my mom used to go to bingos and she would use pennies instead of those markers. Yeah. So she had a bag of pennies. <laughs> so I stole those pennies to go get that creature kit. <laughs> and you knock someone and over on the I, way. <laughs> I got my butt whooped for the creature. <laughs> like the bingo. Like the bingo money. <laughs> what and is it was, about? Was, oh, let's stop there because I think. That's the kit that kind of grabs everyone's attention when they were a kid. What is it about that Aurora creature model that makes it so great, do you think? Because I, when, I, when I was a kid, that was the one I always wanted to see for my uncle's collection. And it just, why did that one stand out to you, you think? Uh, you know what? I, I, besides the pose, we actually got to see the films. I mean, I saw Frankenstein and everything, too, and I loved that. But, I mean, the creature was just like this cool swimming monster, and he got to get go after cool, beautiful looking women. And I was like, yes, man, this is, I need to have this. <laughs> I, no, that my, was actually my first Aurora kit too. Was it? See, that's, <laughs> yeah. and I yeah. think for me, I liked the little details on it. Like I liked oh, the yeah. other lizard and a like lizard, the other the little, snake. the base, the snake, all that cool stuff was in there. Yeah. And it was just like yeah. so much to look at. It was, it was yeah. really, really cool. Well, I'll say too, I think that movie, and like John just said, you know, we all saw the classics. Well, you probably didn't because you were growing up watching 76 King Kong going, that's really good. But um, anyway, the uh, now we'll get comments. Mm, 76 Kong. <laughs> there is anyway, a 4K back, coming out. Did you see that? There's a 4K remaster. Coming what, of the Peter Jackson? No, of the 76. Oh, hey, I went to the movies to see the 76 and I was 10 years old. I thought it was great. See? But when I it's... went back and watched it again... I couldn't, I couldn't do it, man. It just didn't hold up. For, after and Paul this. said that on Discord. Like, if you saw that as a kid, it was awesome. That was great. I was 10 years old when it came out. I went to right. the theater. The puppet was going through New York. They had it in a truck and everything. But when I watched it now, I was like, oh, yeah, my yeah, God. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I go back and watch it 33. It aged better. <laughs> it was on last night, actually, on TNT when I went to bed. I think um, the first time I saw it, it was on regular TV and we just recorded it off TV on VHS. And then I just kept watching it over and over and over. Ah, that's how your parents. Well, anyway, so you had the original whole fan, the original Frankenstein mummy, blah, blah, blah. And they were cool. But first of all, a lot of those movies were just barely over an hour long. Yes. Okay. You'd have, you'd see the creature maybe at the beginning of the movie, maybe once in the middle. And then, at the end when he usually got burnt up or killed or shot or staked or whatever, where the creature, you saw the creature a lot in that movie. Okay. I mean, from the very beginning. Yeah. Okay. till the end. I mean, you saw a lot of the creature and, and then the design was fantastic. So, and the fact that he was in a suit swimming in the water was like, yes. yeah. Yes. Yeah, that was crazy, you know, because like, wow, this guy, this somebody doing this. <laughs> yeah. And I and think you touched the, on it. Um, it looked real. Like that looked like yeah. the first, like, that's a monster. Like, how, like think, look at that I thing. think that what played on all of us and it was very realistic. And, you, yeah. you know, and it gave it that fear, like, could something like that be in the water if I go swimming, you know? <laughs> yeah, because uh, yeah, there's not enough. There's not enough other dangers in the Amazon River. But, you know, exactly throw that in there. But, yeah, so I think. And, and combined with what Jason said, there was the base. It had a snake on it. It had the skeleton hand. It had the other lizard. Um, it had the little cave thing. That, that was my favorite part is that cave part. Yeah. Um, and you got to remember also back in the 70s, at the same time, they, had, they just came out with, what was it, Plex? They came out with the bubbler for the tank. I even had that as well. I did too. Yeah, I remember that. I yeah. did too. And I wish yeah. I, like, it, it was one that didn't survive. I totally had that in our 10-gallon. With our yeah. sword tail swimming around. So Man, that thing's worth a ton of money. Oh, I used to see those at the shows going for hundreds of dollars. Yeah. Uh, you know, the boxes, the cellophane be a little beat up. It didn't matter as long as it was in the box. Yeah. Oh, man. So, yeah, that, you know, that one for me was the one. 
So you kept, add it so, that, so Aurora, you kind of kept going. Uh, how did yeah. you get then turn into this? Oh, that's that's <laughs> an interesting story. Actually, uh, it was like I, I believe it was 1990, and um, a friend of mine he bought his girlfriend, and I and I and I bought my uh, my my old lady at the time. Well, still the time now. We went to go see. We went to a Fangoria convention um, at the Penta Hotel. It was across the street from Madison Square Garden. And on 34th Street. Yeah, by the way, everyone say goodbye to John because when his wife watches this and he's causing the real old lady, I can get the frying pan over the head. So anyway, that's go all, ahead. That's all right. But anyway, um, we went there because like guests were gonna be there, Bruce Campbell and stuff like that. He had just done the Evil Dead, and we and then when we got there into the into the like the vendor room, and it was like that's when I saw Resin from the Grave. I saw dimensional designs. Um I think classic plastic was there. Okay. There was a few there was a few vendors there selling kits. And I'm like, what is this? And they were resin kits, you know, like what's resin? It's like hard plastic. And I was trying to figure it out. And I was blown away. I was like, this is not like the shit I grew up with. The, you know, the detail was really well done. And it was nice stuff. And I was like, wow. I mean, the Kong for sellers. You know, Kong and Rex that Joe had done was was on the table built up, and I was just blown away by that thing. I was like, holy crap. Yeah, and I used I to like, get told he had great buildups on his table, too, that they were beautiful. He did. He did have decent yeah. buildups on his table. So I was like, oh, I'm trying to remember which one I bought first. I think I ended up getting a, a, a vinyl kit, though, because they're a little more inexpensive. It might have been a screaming kit or a horizon kit. I can't, I think it was a screaming kit. I don't know if it was the werewolf or something else. I can't remember which one. Back then, I, it might have been Freddy or something. I can't remember. But um, so I had to learn this whole new curve on how to put together vinyl kits, how to <laughs> yeah. put together kits. And it was a big learning curve from Sty Styrene. So I had to buy Dremels and, you know, knives and all this stuff. And I, I got into it. And I started building them. And then uh, in 1992, and I, I, you know, I said, yeah, I'm going to start selling. So I became producer. And initially, I didn't produce resin kits. The first few months, I I uh, I bought. I was selling Horizon. I was I was a retailer. I was selling Horizon. I hooked up with Mike Ruffalo from Billiken USA. I was selling Billiken kits. I was selling Screaming kits, and then I was doing hobby supplies like uh, paints and you know glues and all this kind of was stuff. Was this under Jayco's name or was it? Yes, this okay. is under Jayco. Yes. So let's talk Jayco. about where did the name Jayco come from? Like, how did that? That's funny because I I used to be called Jay. We're hanging out as kids. And I was thinking on spot when I went to go register, I didn't even think of what to call my company. So I was like, you know what? Jay's company. Little do I find out years later, it's like a, a, a you know, an RV chain, Jay Kohabi. Jay Kohabi is an RV chain. I had no idea when I did it. So I was like, I went from Jay's company. And I think Dan, uh, Danny from uh, Sass says, why did you call yourself Jayco? I was like, because Jay's company. He's like, wow, you know, it's an RV chain. I'm like, really? And then I find out, oh, oh crap. <laughs> that's awesome that's a great start <laughs> so is that why you changed to resin realities or did you later on i changed to resin realities afterwards yeah wow it was okay. time to change yeah. <laughs> see that's why i like this show you learn little things like that that you would never that's cool yeah so how'd that keep going what was like so i my first show that i set up as a vendor was at uh chiller theater and it was in the fairly dickinson in the uh the college where they had the big gymnasium and that's when I got to meet, like, you know, other guys. Like, that's when I first met Terry. And I already knew Sean because at that point, I already hired Sean Nagel. He was very helpful. And, uh, you know, he Sean was great about he didn't hide anything. Like, he gave me some molding techniques. And when we hired him to do the, uh, we did the Savage Dragon with him. And then we did the uh, the Tribal Warrior Predator. You know, he designed it to be easy mold friendly for me and stuff like that. And uh, he was one of the first sculptors. One of the first sculptors I met, as, as as opposed to like Louis Vasquez, who I hired first. So I got to started meeting guys. Dave, I, Dave Fisher, I actually met first at um at that Virginia convention, the Forey Ackerman convention. Yeah, 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 I remember that. And he had entered uh, three customized predators. He had done. He did a predator diorama with the Billiken predators. He had one sitting in the throne, and one standing beside. And I was like, well, I was blown away by this. And I that's when I first met Dave. Was when he was entering that. Um, it was pretty cool. He was like pretty, uh, he was pretty badass back in the day too. <laughs> I, I think my first, 
it was, I knew that there was AFM, but I had just picked up like an airbrush magazine in college and he had done the blind beauty from Volks in there. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh shit, that's amazing. That's so good. Yeah. And that's what, that was my first, like, holy, that guy's awesome. Yeah. That was my first thing. Clean. Was that airbrush action? Yeah. I still have it somewhere. I wonder I which issue. Cause I've got like, they, they did a thing where they put them all on DVD. So I've got like a oh. bunch of airbrush actions on a DVD. Yeah. It was airbrush. And I just like happened upon it in a comic shop. And I was like, what are they talking about? Um, your first kit was what? That you produced? Um, the first produced kit I did was with Louis Vasquez, and I believe it was Nessie. I got. I didn't find pictures of that one for you. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. Uh, it was a Nessie kit, and I met Louis. When? Where did I meet Louis? I think he. We bumped into each other. If I'm not mistaken, most of the guys back in the day, I bumped into at Village Comics, down the city. That's like where a lot of us met each other. <laughs> And that's yeah, because Paul. Who was it? It was Paul that said. Who said they ran into you across the when? Well, me and Paul, me me and Paul. Paul, I met Paul at Village Comics. Yeah, that's what it was. Paul that told us that. Yeah, he was he was he was painting Horizon kids for like twenty five, thirty bucks for Joe, just to get into it. Like you know, yeah. And um, then he met me, and he wanted to learn how to cast and all that stuff. And I was teaching him. And then we met Mark at Village Comics later on. Mark was trying to hawk his uh his uh bust of Clint Eastwood. Okay. And we said, we'll take a chance on you. And then that's how we hooked up. Yeah, that's okay. How? <laughs> so well, wait, I got to ask a quick oh, question. Was sure. Nessie uh, with, with a boat and one guy. Yes. Pulling a guy? Okay, yes. I just found a picture of it. So that's, throw it in yeah, there. I'll, was, th- I'll throw it in. That was also okay. in a Japanese magazine too. Okay. That's what? crazy. I, I didn't even know that. I, I, I'm looking at this going, I've never seen this. So, yeah, <laughs> that was one of my that was my first kit, and then Louis also did the uh, he did the Goro for me from Mortal Kombat, okay. a small scale Goro, and he did I did include a picture there of a werewolf. Uh, I sent that Jason and right. Louis did that. That's interesting. That one, that one I wanted a pool game. I didn't even have to pay for that sculpt. That's 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 a story for the first trip to Wonderfest. Ooh. So when you put that picture up, I got one for that. Well, I want to first of all before we do that, New York. Yes. This, you can kind of divide this hobby by region, right? Yeah. East Coast. You got your East Coast, you got your West Coast, and you got us weirdos in the middle. East Coast tends to dominate for some reason. Is it just me? Like, it's always like, you guys are the loudest. Yeah. You you make the most noise. You got your tuckies on the, the West Coast. <laughs> He's and, still and, making and, noise. Right. He's still <laughs> making noise. making noise, yeah. <laughs> and you got, got us there kind of just in the middle, whatever, but how big was this hobby since you're in the how in new york like how many guys are actually were like was it a huge thing there that people were able to like get together and do stuff together whereas we have to drive forever to meet someone else that was no we get on the train and we go down to village comics and i mean village comics is on one side and right directly across the street was another his competitor called uh children of paradise and he would buy office as well too and that guy, he would have a lot of more. He would. He wasn't comics. He was more old collectible toys. And you could walk into Children of Paradise and like bump into Michael Jackson, Steve Buscemi, because they'd be over there shopping. Yeah. So see, that's so cool. <laughs> Not even you know, there. you would you would see the you would see the strange celebrities all the time going in the store buying stuff. Wow. So it was always cool to go down there. We bump and we kind of like, even though we were competitors with each other, we we'd always hang out, go have lunch or whatever. Hey, what's going on? Make it a delivery. Yeah, make a delivery. You know, we deliver the kids or whatever to hang out with the painters. Uh, that's the good thing about the East Coast had a really strong uh, modeling community back in the day for sure. And somewhat still, like it still feels like East Coast is where it's at. Like people. Well, people a, lot of guys, a lot of guys move. Like a muck time yeah. moved to Pennsylvania. Rob moved to North Carolina. Saul's gone to Florida. You know, a lot, a lot, a lot, a few of the guys have gone. You know, but it is I still, what it is. You know what? Everybody's moves, but I still think they're there. <laughs> that's what it is, I think. <laughs> Wait, oh, man. That's probably true. So, um, yeah, first trip to... How did you find Wonderfest? Was it through the magazine like like the rest of us? Or did someone yes. else say... Okay. Um, I saw an ad. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Terry and Dave were still doing modeling toy at the very beginning. And then right after that, I think they did the uh, yeah. AFM. Yeah, you're probably yeah. correct. So I probably saw it through Marlon Toy because you know you remember back then 
you had to buy magazines to see what was going on, who was selling new kits, where the shows were, because they would always advertise in the magazines. There was no internet back then. Not much. Uh, I mean, it was. were you on Gremlins? I was not on Gremlins. I didn't get a computer until like 2000. <laughs> I was a late bloom with the computer. Okay. So I know Gremlins was before that. Yeah, it was. It was like yeah, 19, Gremlins, what, was, yeah. Gremlins was a hot mess. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you fit right in, Scott. I did back then. We're going to get into this. <laughs> We're going to get into this. <laughs> I did back then. So made, but, uh, what yeah, year I was did, it then that I you did. made it down? Sorry. Um, so I went down there with my sculptor, uh, Louis Vasquez. We had the Nessie kit. We had the Goro kit. Um, I had hired another sculptor, Ian Coulter, who was legally blind. He was sculpted with toothpicks. And he did my um, uh, Blanca kit. So we have like three, I mean, we had three small kids going down there. And I, I met Cipriano down there. I already had known uh, Luis De La Fuente from Grayson because we had met at Chiller and yeah. Kendall, Kendall Brown from the Nations and, um, you know, Ian Coulter. There was a bunch of guys, Sean, I knew. And, you know, we got down. It was cool. You know, it wasn't as, it wasn't a Chiller. You know, it was nowhere near as crowded as Chiller was at the time because back then Chiller was a show. But uh, it was nice, you know, didn't make a ton of money, but had a lot of fun. So, um, at the place, we already knew Gordy at that time. We would, we would, um, if Gordy couldn't do a show, we had a deal with Gordy from Kit Builders that I would take pictures of the other show he wasn't at, and I would just send him, you know, taking rolls of 35 millimeter pictures and <laughs> probably spending a hundred dollars in film and developing uh -huh. just to send it to him. And then he would put the pictures in the magazine of the show, but I always made sure it was like me and my friends. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. So, uh, but yeah, we got down there and, uh, we went to the bar. And we started playing pool and we beat some local guys and they weren't happy about it. It was like a, it was like a, um, a hotel bar. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I guess the guys went in there to play pool or whatever. So then I was playing pool with my sculptor and he's like, he got a little cocky. He was feeling all right, you know? And, um, I was like, Oh, let's play for a sculpt. He's like, Oh, you want to play for a sculpt? I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> he goes, you're going to pay me double. I was like, Oh, I have to pay you double. I said, okay, let's play. Boom. I kicked his ass. He had to do that sculpt. For <laughs> You're doing me a werewolf. And that was it. So I got a, I got a sculpt from a werewolf from a pool game. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Before we get into some of the kids that, that you sent, um, did you guys, we talked a little bit about redemption arcs last time. Mm-hmm. The two of you hated each other at one point. No, not no, hated. No, no, not I'm hated. Not so That's a little harsh. Hated. There's okay. been never, some words. I, there's Never. been some words. Can I say that? Uh, sure. Okay. Here we, and here we yeah, are. And here we are. Brief, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you like to just, the two of you just kind of show, like, because like you, Paul is, Scott is, Scott, you're out of focus again. Why is this happening? Thank God I'm out of focus. <laughs> we've talked to Paul, because Scott and Paul, there's, you know, they've, they've had words too, and we've mended those fences. And I think part of this show is kind of just opening this community back up to everybody and so for people who've seen some of those very public back and forth, here we are. Yeah. And if you yeah. guys want to just kind of talk about some of that, I'll sit back and let you two just kind of <laughs> talk sure, a I got about it. With that. Yeah. So John and I um, had a disagreement. And, and to be honest with you, I don't even know what it was about at this point. <laughs> it was um, tough foot. And it was. Tucky foot started it. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> God, damn, Tucky's always starting trouble. But um, you know. So I wait, wait, stop right there. How did Tucky's foot start the argument? Uh, I think Scott had posted it. This time, Scott was uh was in a spirited debate with John Tucky, and uh, he had posted his foot picture once on um another board we were both moderating, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know. I said nothing. And then yeah. Scott came back and he was just like, he posted another time and I took it down. I think that that was uh, the start of it. Uh, you know, I yes, that's right. Okay. I, I remember. <laughs> I should have said something to him behind the scenes instead of just taking it down. I was at full for it. So I apologize for it. Well, and, and, and I apologize for my part in it. Um, we just kind of, I mean, so in 2019 at Jersey Fest, I mean, I was right there with John most of the show sitting with John and Rob. And that's the show that, you know, Paul and I almost got into it at. So it, it I missed that. I wasn't in the room for that one. <laughs> no, you well no, it's out in the hallway. But yeah. So but anyway, it, it's all water under the bridge now. Everyone, yeah, absolutely. We're all good. And um 
but it was after that that I kind of got to a point, you know, that and and I had just had a cancer operation like six months prior. And I just started to think about things different. I'm like, you know, all these stupid arguments, it's just fucking dumb. Yeah. And, you know, I'm just not, I, no, I'm not doing it anymore. And then John and I got into it like right after that. I'm like, I'm trying to fucking not do this. <laughs> okay. But it's still fresh. It's, you know, that, that beast is still right there. And um, so at that point, you know, I just kind of, separated out and and you remember jason even when we started this you know i said i don't really have a problem with anyone in the hobby i said i don't really speak to john diaz anymore but if you want to have him on i'm more than okay with it you yeah know? i remember yes and yeah. um and then john um through his own um whatever was going on he can explain that if he wants reached out to me in an email and I was like, you know, as with anything, when there's an argument, you're kind of like, hey, you know, let's see where this goes. And um, here we are. So and then John and I, when we were going to do this, got on the phone, what, two, three days ago? Yeah. And talked for about an hour and a half. And, yes. uh, you know, yeah, really but it wasn't just you, Scott. I was I was in a bad place yeah. myself and I had my I just lost my dad. I went through a whole thing with dementia and all that stuff. And I was doing a lot of drinking and I'll be a willing to admit that. And I gave it up. And I said, you know what? I owe some people some apologies and hopefully they'll accept them. And I reached out to a bunch of people that mm -hmm. I felt, you know, I might have said something that wasn't right. And so far, everybody's been cool about it, you know? I think that's amazing. Which I'm grateful for. I, I really, it's it's good to see. And I, I mean, I've had my moments in the past too where I argue with people. <laughs> and we all do. I, yeah. And it's, it's good to see that everyone can kind of come back and it's one big family. People argue people, but at the end we all love this and we all want to see this. Well, absolutely. Well. Man. There's not enough time. There's never enough time. And there's no. no point in wasting one more moment of it with stupidity. I agree. Right. Well, and, and it's John and I, I think are kind of in the same place at this point. Oh with yeah. All that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And you know, we, we talked about my falling out with, John Tucky and stuff and how it's unfortunate because I'd like to think with this show, I mean, and having mended fences with Paul and stuff like that, that I could have mended that fence. Okay. Maybe I'm it sure you could have been. Uh, listen, who would have thought you would have mended the fence with the clubhouse? <laughs> Dude, I was banned for life. I was the Pete Rose of the clubhouse. You were banned for life and you're back I, now. You're a celebrity. Over here. <laughs> I had, I had more posts than anyone else that was banned. I was like the yeah, hits course. leader. I think there I was, was like a big X and it just said Scott Johansson. <laughs> banned for life. Banned for life. It said banned for life. I still got a screen grab. And, um, and actually it was, it was Trevor that approached me and, and asked again, Hey, you know, would you like to come back? And, you know, and I'm like, sure, you know, and, uh, the clubhouse has kind of died now, but I am a member there and I go in. Oh there. yeah. I still go over there once in a while. And, it's uh, what brought us to the dance, Scott. Yeah. yeah. Well, it is, it is. It started gremlins and then the various groups, then the clubhouse was really what I, and what I still like about the clubhouse, although it's not happening anymore, is it was a central place to go. Oh, yeah. Okay, where, you know, even if everyone didn't like anybody or whatever, it was a central place to go. And now... Yeah, people who are have no idea what we're talking about, it's the clubhouse1.net. Head over there, yeah, sign the up. Board. It's, a, it's, it's an old-fashioned old bulletin, bulletin board. board. Yep. Or, yeah. And where Facebook has kind of... This faction of guys is over here, and this faction of guys is over yeah. there. And, and, and it's still kind of that way. I mean, it's... You know, I like to think we're helping... Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, but it, it's, you know, where the clubhouse at that time was it was convenient because it was ever doing it. Trust me, I had my share of arguments there with people. Me too. And, <laughs> but the uh, clubhouse is good there now for, like, guys like Jason in the beginning who was shy. You can go post pics or just lurk to yeah. see yeah. what's going on and, and not even say a word, you know? Yep. Absolutely. That is, so, that's, yeah. You know, it, it's, it, yeah, it served its purpose and, and it's, um... You know, as back to the redemption thing. I had a good talk with John the other day, and uh, there's no issue at all. No, and, not at all. Um, it was a misunderstanding that got, got out of hand. You know, and even then, I, you know, I would tell the people that mutually knew both of us. I would say, you know, 
I said, if I saw him, I would say hello. I wouldn't be rude. Okay. I was just at a point where like, yeah, that's probably going to be it. It's going to be hello <laughs> and that's it. And that's nah. what, you know, it, it's so, it might be goodbye now too, but I mean, it's, it, you know, I'm like, <laughs> hey, hey, hi, bye. No, but, uh, you know, and John and I were always good, again, yeah. about busting each other's balls. I used to give him shit about his boxes because he'd, He'd raid the post office for his boxes, <laughs> cheap ass. And um, hey, medium flat rate, my con fit perfectly into it. And if anybody and, want to ship the kid, you know home, what? It's, and it's still in there. It's still <laughs> it's in the basement in that box. And okay. you know what the funny thing is? Every one to fest after that, you watch how many people have postal boxes with their kits in it. <laughs> Worse, like, you are <laughs> not wrong. <laughs> I did it. Jamie did it. I totally. I think we're all admitting to a federal crime, actually, or something. Hey, right. they want to give you the boxes. They're shipping. We plan on shipping those kits at some point. Well, somebody's going to ship them. <laughs> yeah, someone's going to ship them. We're we're pre <laughs> pre packing them. Um, but no, I think that's great, and I'm glad everyone was able to kind of mend that fence. And of course, it, and if you guys could do it, I think you're right. I think if John had come on this show, John Tucky, I think we could have worked this out at some point, possibly. But. <laughs> Well, no, and and I'll get. He'll probably call in and say no, but yeah. we'll see. <laughs> call me? and let us know. Um, <laughs> no, and and I I will say this: I will give, um, Paul kudos because he is the one after the Jersey Fest, and I don't know how long after it was, honestly. Um, that reached out to me, and you know, got on the phone with me. First, he called me and I saw his number, and I'm like, "Fuck, he want." But <laughs> I said, "Okay, you know, maybe he dialed me by accident." So I just, you know, I called him back. I said, "Hey, man, I saw you called. You know, and you know, if it was accident, that's fine." But and he's like, "Well, can we talk?" And I was like, "Yeah, we can talk." You know, and, and see, that's the key. Communication, of course, is the key, and you have to be willing. You have to be in the place, John. Like you said, you weren't in a place at that point that you. No you know, wanted, you know, to, to deal with any of it. And I was in a place that I just wanted away from it. You know, yep. at that time when I got away from it, I left every group. I left everything for a few months because it was Scott like, does this every couple of weeks though with me. He's like, I'm out. I'm done. I'm gonna... Well, yeah, but, <laughs> but I was out for a couple of months that, yeah. that I wasn't really going anywhere. So, it was... but, I mean, um, but no, I, Thank you both for being bigger. No people worries, than, man. I'm glad I could be. Like, I'm happy we work things out. Yeah. Yeah. Really, the only one I hate now, Jason, is you. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's okay. <laughs> an asshole. Um, right, so anyway, I think this is supposed to be about John. So yeah. So we're doing that. Yeah. Um, kids. Before we get into any of the ones, so if you could go and just say out of all, do you know how many you've produced total? Do you know the number? No, no. I don't remember. What's your your favorite and the one that bombed the hardest that you're like, Ugh, I wish I never did that. Oh, the favorite's going to be tough, man. Like our, do, do for, your Mount Rushmore of Jayco resin realities kits. Like your, what are your four? Like if you had to uh, pick, I'm going to say the Vittorious bus by Mark Van Tyne. I'm going to say the Maliva by Wayne the Dane. Because we fought to get that, and he was ready to give up, and I, I kept nudging him until he got it, and he got it. Um, shit. <laughs> you say four, right? I got yeah, two yeah, more. Yeah, you can no. do four. Hey. Or... I don't want to slight any sculptors by picking only four, and that's what sucks. But I'm gonna. Those two mean a lot to me, so I'm gonna say. Uh... I'm gonna put the Maliva up real quick so people can see what we're talking about. While we're there, talk about that kit. Oh, that was great. Yeah, let's um, talk about that. How did that come to be? Because it's, it's one of those that you would think would have, like, there'd be a bunch of them, but there's not. Um, it, was, it was easy. At the time, we were doing the, uh, the Bride of Frankenstein line with Mark. We had done the Pretorius, and we had done the Clive, and we had the Bride. He was working on the Frankenstein. It wasn't done yet. And now it was... We, and I was trying to get some classic stuff done before the Harry Housen show for 2003 cause, for Wonderfest because he was yeah. going to be there. And I told Wayne, um, you know, Wayne 
God love me. He'll he's one of the nicest guys in the hobby. You know what I mean? And wait, uh, is he nicer than Rob Madison? Ooh, that. Uh, ooh, we, we well, I've the- had more experience. I, 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 I would say they're both on par. But I mean, Wayne, I have had more close relationship with. Like, you know, we need to have a it. cage match with Rob. Yeah, <laughs> and plus, nice I, listen, if I got, if I got, if I have to. If I have to pick one, I love you, Rob, but I love Wayne. <laughs> Wayne's a Bronx boy. Wayne was born in the Bronx. Ooh. He went to school the same high. I, I, yeah, we need a we need a battle royal with the nicest guys. <laughs> how do you how do you have nice guys battle? Yeah. Well, Wayne used the, to be in Vietnam, so my money's on Wayne. <laughs> <laughs> I I'll cut this yeah. out. They probably both smoke the same amount of weed. And like, <laughs> don't smoke it for him. He gave it up. After Did he, he really? His- oh, I was going to say, after he burned his shit down? Okay. I'll cut that out. Well, that's fine. All right. Oh continue. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah. Uh, so we were trying. I told Wayne, let's do the Maliva to be a companion piece of Geometrics Wolfman, the Mike Hill Wolfman. So uh, he's like, okay, I can do it. So, we were going back and forth and going back and forth, and the likeness was getting there, it was getting there, it was getting there. And then he thought he was done, and like uh, the wrinkles, she had a lot of wrinkles in her forehead. Mm-hmm. And um, they were too deep. They looked like a like Ric Flair or something, a dusty road, you know, like bladed. bladed. And I said, Wayne, you got to soften them, you got to soften them. Saul's like, leave him alone. It's close enough. I was like, no, it's not. It's got to be better. It's got to be better. <laughs> so he saw, I said, listen, Harry Howard's going to be there. It's going to be a big show. You got to do it. So he did it. And I was so proud of him, man. We were all so proud of him. And uh, Saul did a fantastic job on the build-up. I still own that build-up. Um, he did all the details and a bandana and everything. And I, it was just a great kit. And we got to the, when we got to the, the, the show, everybody was falling off, Ray. I couldn't get online. I was, my, my, you, know, my, you know, you're man at the table. And the line's long for Ray. And um, at the same show, Carolyn Monroe's there. And my friend Jerry. Now, Jerry knows Carolyn, and I know Carolyn. And... Um, so she kind of set up the old come over to the table signing thing, but he already come to my table three times, picking up the bus and looking at them. And he and he went over to Maliva after he's like, Oh, Maria Aspenskaya, because he knew about, you know, by her, her real name. Yeah. He goes, This is wonderful. I said, This guy did it right here, Wayne the Dane. And Wayne was just beaming that <laughs> he was noticing our stuff. And um he was hooked up with um John Alakovic from uh Janus, yeah. Danis, he was like with them at the time, and he wanted to get our busts. He wanted to buy the buildups. I didn't want to give him the buildups. So I was like, well, give him the buildups, and I'll paint new ones. Like, all right, whatever. That's fine. <laughs> so he's like, when he came over to the table, we just, we're going to trade him for autographs. You know, we're not going to charge him money. Like, you know, so, um, so I was like, yeah, I want, I, it's going to cost you uh, a check for $1. So Saul so took the check for $1 instead of getting three, one, three $1 checks from me and Mark. He had and a checkbook so, on him. He did. Yeah. yeah. Like a true senior citizen. <laughs> yeah. but you know what? He walked away with the three buildups. He was beaming. He loved them. Uh, I, we were flat. We were honored that, you know, yeah. he came to our table. He picked he came to our table three times and then I got him to come to our table to sign all the stuff he wanted to sign at our table instead of going to get on his table and wait online. Oh, that's so cool. Somewhere there's a photo of you guys with him. Yeah, there is. There's a photo of all of us together. Find, if I can find that, we'll, we'll I, let, stick it in. I know That's I have so it somewhere. Cool. I should have put it up. I forgot to. <sighs> I mean, that first time, was it 97 that he was there? or was 96. It 96. 96 was the first time he was there. When they showed his movies, and he just, it was me and my friend Tom, and we were watching the movies like up in that room where they do the filming stuff, the films, and he sat directly behind the two of us while we're watching all his stuff, and it was the most surreal I'm like oh my god, <laughs> Harry Housen is behind me. Like I ha- like it was so weird. It's so bizarre. <laughs> well, I remember too that '96 show because John, you were there. Um, it's the first time I met John. Yeah, and I had seen the Bayou Beast, which is the man thing in Kit Builders, and I always thought, man, this is really cool. You know, someone did first of all that somebody did it because that's something you figured nobody would ever do. Yeah. Okay. And it looked, I, I thought Mark, even even with the, you know, the early sculpting abilities and, and how he progressed when he That was his best time. piece at the time. But at the time, that was his best piece. And even at the time, he captured that, the man thing always had that lurching forward thing. And so, um, and I think I've told the story here before, 
I went to John's table. I, I looked at it a couple of times. And when I finally said, all right, I'm going to buy it. He was out of. It. Yeah, it was sold out. And he sold was out like, quick. And he was like, well, if you give me the money, I'll send you one in like a week. And, you know, I'm kind of sitting here thinking, I don't know this guy from, you know, <laughs> this guy from the Bronx. You're going to leave and take my <laughs> money. <laughs> he's leave, he's going to take my money. And and but I was like, yeah, OK, yeah. All right. And he took my address and everything. And uh, yeah, within a week or a week and a half or whatever, I had it. And um, I had it till about two, three years ago. And Rob Madison, the nicest guy in the hobby, um, always being the big man thing fan that he was, and knowing that I had Mark's Bowen statue, I ended up giving him my Bayou Beast, um, which sparked a whole. Remember, Warren was or not Warren. Uh, Dan Cherney was looking for one. He ended up getting <laughs> one from someone. So it was like, yeah, it, it was like a whole thing. But yeah, that was my first meeting with John and then knowing John was okay. And John remembered because then after every show after that, he remembered who I was. Oh yeah. Year and you know, so. so I think I met Jinxie there. I think Jinxie probably got the one right before you. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> I I want to thank you though. When you sent me pictures, you sent the sculptor and the painter. So yes. the, the, and some of these are a little small on screen, so it's hard to see, but Dan Cope painted this and the other, the werewolf that we have up here is, uh, oh my God, I just lost my place. I have three pages of, I, I printed out everything you have. Um, who painted the werewolf? Oh, Saul. Saul painted the werewolf there. Uh, Dan Cope, the, like when I go through your list of painters, you kind of work with the same painters kind of over and over again, the same sculptors over and over again. Um, Dan's one of those guys that was huge and now is like, is Dan okay? Like for people who don't know the Dan, like people who just came into the hobby, they don't know who yeah. Dan Cope is. They don't know who Dano is. And he was like one of the, the painters back in the day. Like he was the man. Oh yeah. And he texts me every day. We text each other every day. Does he still paint? Uh, I haven't asked him. I don't think he does. Really? I think he had some medical conditions that didn't allow, didn't allow him to do oh, it. Oh no. Okay. I'd love it. We should get him on and go talk about it he would be good to have on that'd be awesome he's worked, yeah he's worked intimately doing bone stuff too yeah man yeah, he oh, kind of time, perfected that selling stuff to bone too that's another story yeah well, else... we're gonna i was gonna go there but um we'll go there right <laughs> after this <laughs> I, he um he perfected that like metallics were oh yes and oh, then yes. you know so like the iron man where he would still do the yellow and red well i'm gonna get it okay, but it would be a metallic yellow and red and look really Did cool I... He did my Doctor Doom with the Alclad. I still have that. The okay. Doctor Doom that Alterton did for me when I first hired Alterton when nobody wanted to mm -hmm. hire Alterton. There it is. I have it on screen now. Okay. Let's talk about that. This this Doctor Doom is one of the best Doctor Doom still. Like it's badass. You know, so many, you, know, you know how many Doctor Dooms have imitated that pose? Yeah. Side show, yeah. Diamond. Diamond actually hired the same sculptor to do it. Altitude. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> hey, by the way, though, I wanted to notice. Notice John dodged that. That what was the biggest Jayco bomb? Uh, oh yeah, no. Oh, let's no. go back. though. we missed it. We we kept going. Yeah, Sorry, yeah. guys. <laughs> we yes, didn't come up with our fourth. We'll let you go with three. What was the biggest bomb? The the biggest Jayco bomb was. And that doesn't mean it was a bad kit, right? It just like what? Like it didn't sell. Yeah. yeah. The the she kit that Joel Adotti had done for me of uh, Michelle Rodriguez. From Machete. Really? Yeah. Okay. I think that was one of my biggest bombs. What would you say was your best seller? Well, the Bayou Beast for sure. I was one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Go I can't get into numbers. So we're, yeah. No, we won't. No, no, no. no. <laughs> but, but I mean, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure you probably did pretty well with those busts. The bust, the Kong. Uh, the uh, superhero uh, bust, the superhero series. The Mark superheroes, did. the Scorpion was probably the best seller. Okay. And, and the Werewolf by Night. Okay. Like, I've got the Daredevil. Yes. Um, that was initially started by Sam Greenwell. You guys keep talking. I'm going to push buttons and try and catch up with you. Okay. So keep, um, keep going. Yeah, the Daredevil. I like. I love the Daredevil. Um, and then you had the, the Craven and the Spider-Man. Yep. And the Scorpion and the Bullseye. The bullseye was done by Helder. That was later on after Mark had stopped doing the line, and right. I wanted 
one more character to go with Daredevil, so I had hell to do the bullseye. And I think a lot of people don't realize that those bases are locked, but they did. Yep. And, um, I have the picture up here. You can kind of see how they lock. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, and I remember Mark won a gold medal for painting those too. Uh, at, at the, Wonderfest, uh, at Wonderfest. At Wonderfest and also at the, um, Oh, is it MF? What's what's the contest where like Shepard Payne, all these international painters go to? I think it was in Pennsylvania. Oh, okay. MFC or something. I, I yes, because that was the one we went to in Chicago when it was here, Scott. I think the one year. You'd have to ask Mark. Okay. But the funny thing is, Mark entered those same buildups at Chiller, and I think he got a I think he got a merit. And when he went to the MFC, he got a gold. <laughs> but by that time, Chiller had was already wandering away i think from being a mom yeah doing the 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 awards with kinko certificates so yeah i you know it, do what, did what you will <laughs> so so let's let's talk about your if we can your bowen connection okay? absolutely so i want to say was craven kind of the first one he never that, took or, that Craven. he had oh, Mark okay another one mark sculpted another one for him yes. okay my craven was better looked like tom Selleck. So it does look like Tom Selleck. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> so then what was the first piece that you actually let's say gave up to Bowen or whatever and, and what's the you know, is there a good story there how that happened? How Yeah, you- absolutely. Um when Helder when Helder came Daniel kinda hooked me up with Helder. Uh he was from Brazil, he was living in Florida at the time with his wife. And um he was sculpting some stuff and Dan was like, yo, you should contact this guy. He's pretty good. So I contacted Helder. I'd seen some stuff he had done. He had done a small night crawler, which he had submitted to Bowen. And uh Bowen said no, but then he had someone else sculpt the same exact pose. So it was always Helder's like dream to have his stuff produced by Bowen. So so I was like, yeah, let's do some stuff. So when I had him sculpt me the Omega Red and um that was it. We started we sold a bunch of them. Until one day, I I uh, I saw one. I knew what Randy Bowen's eBay seller name was, and he bought one. And I was like, "I'm not selling to you." He's like, "Why?" I said, "Because you're going to get me a C and D." He's like, "No, man, I want to buy it." He goes, "I'm going to I want to produce this as a statue." I was like, "All right, so I'm not going to sell it to you. Let's trade." <laughs> so I traded I traded him for like a, a Thanos painted one. Like he didn't care, and it was like an artist proof. Mm-hmm. So I traded them, and then we we hooked, we did a deal for the Omega Red, and I, I I included in the deal, you know, five or six castings signed in the base by him, and they had to be artist proofs and this and that. And I told him I wouldn't produce the kit anymore. It, you know, he would take it over as a statue. And then we did the Omega Red. Helder and I did the Omega Red with him, and we did the Terax. He changed the Terax around. He kept the sword. He kept the body. But he changed the legs. And he made them straight, like he straight. He slimmed them down a bit, so he got the Terax and he got the uh, the Omega Red through from me through Helder. So I did that with him, and then my other sculptor, Alex Mores, he got the Deathlock and the Iron Man. And a Deathlock, all he did was put his mini bus head on it and kept the body the same, and the base the same. And the small Iron Man, the Invincible Iron Man, all he did was put a riser under it. Yeah, because he, his deal with Marvel is they had to be so high. Yes, they had to be 12, 12 inches, but oh, I think that te- I think they're one night scale, if I'm not mistaken. They were like an odd scale. They were over. They were all over the place. They, you know, some of them were taller than twelve inches, but whatever. We, I worked with Bowen on four occasions, and he was good to work with, no problems whatsoever. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of like didn't have much of a choice with the Iron Man because we we had sold a couple of them as castings first, and then the C and D came. And he's like, all right. I was like, all right, C and D. So I guess I'm selling it to you. And that was it. But he did uh, continue to work. Do you think he had anything to do with the C and D, or do you? I, I, you know what? I don't know. I, I, I don't even care. It doesn't matter. You know, I mean, at the time, Marvel was a. You had to be careful because he was he was doing all the full scale stuff at that at that mm-hmm. point. Right. And he, I, what his deal with working with Mark, I wasn't. I had no part of that. He just wanted to work with Mark because he saw the man thing he did. He wanted Mark to do the man thing, so Mark did the man thing, and he wanted Mark to do the Craven, and Mark did the Craven, but. Mark's craving for bone. Sorry, I, I don't. I don't think it was as good as the one that he did for us. But that wasn't a great seller for us either. 
Not many, not many people want a guy in tights. I mean, what works on comics don't always work in real life, you know? I got to say, Mark's um, man thing for Bowen. Oh, yeah, it's phenomenal. It is a get. It, it, oh, yeah. That was about as good as it gets. And the, uh, the Mysterio he did for Bowen, too. Yes. Um, Great piece. I didn't order that one from the comic store, but when I went to the comic store and actually saw it on the shelf, and I'm looking at it going, I got to have that. That's beautiful. And oh, so yeah. I ended up buying it there. Yep. But, um, you know, it, it's, um, yeah, it, it's pretty crazy. So let's let's talk about C&D. Yeah, yeah, you, I was, have, you, you got me. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. So how uh, many have you gotten over the years? I mean, well, I went, what was your first? And how did uh, you feel? Eric, my first one was from Eric Lawson for the Savage Dragon that Sean Nagel sculpted for us. And, um, the reason that happened is because I don't know if you guys remember the old model and toy collector. Yep. Yep. Uh, we were at a show and I forgot the guy's name. I speak to him all the time. It'll come to me later. He took pictures of it. He put on the cover, <laughs> put the Savage <laughs> Dragon on the cover. And I was like, the next thing I'm going to see and D from Eric Lawson. I'm like, what the hell? And he's like, Oh, I thought it was licensed. It's like you, you could have asked me first. <laughs> That was my first one. Um, I got. How did you feel more. when you got it? Like in the mail, were you like, were you nervous? Were you like, oh crap? Or you're like, oh whatever, I'll, I'll stop selling it. Like, I'll just stop selling it. You know, the burden of proof falls on them when I sell. I'm not going to admit anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> I got one from. I got two from Marvel. I got one for the sleeve stack from Wayne. From was it? Who put out the? I have put that out kid. that movie with Will Ferrell, the the Land of the Lost. Really, they see indeed on that. Oh, yeah. The guy bought one off me on eBay, and um, he wanted to try to find me $25,000. I laughed at him. I said, I, I, I returned his, I PayPal'd him back the money. said, here, keep it as a gift. Uh, you won't see it again. And that was it. They just try to bully you. I have that kit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. D&D. Like, how do man, you think? I only got one, and I know where it came from, but that's a, another story for another day. But, uh. It's, it goes to the territory, man. Yeah. So tell us about your partnership with Mr. Kelly, Ken Kelly. Um, I know you did some pieces based on his art as well. And yes. Um, Fritz Fritz knew Ken and um, Sue Finley. Okay. Well, Ken, they were setting up together to show stuff like that. And I knew Sue from before. She was dating my sculptor, Ian Coulter, way back in the day. And uh, I, I asked her, I was like, listen, I'd like to work with, do some of Ken's stuff. I know Ken had done stuff before because I know Seth, if I'm not mistaken, Vandable it's, did the uh, Snake Pit. Yeah. Ken Kelly, there was a couple yeah. of pieces they did. So mad I can and it was, that. It was, uh, I think they did it as a prepaint and as a kid, if I'm not yep. mistaken. Yeah, they did. Yep, there was both. Okay, so I wanted to do some 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 of his females and stuff like that, and um, he was receptive to it, and I I offered him terms. He said, "Yeah, okay," and that was it. So uh, I I paid him a percentage, and he signed certificates for me. So we started with the girls, and then um, we did the uh, the keeper. We just that was just a bust, but we wanted to do a full figure, so I had him do like a sketch for legs and stuff like that, and then my sculptor Thiago Proven, uh, who's done a lot of good stuff. Um, he made up the base for the creature head and all that kind of stuff. And uh, we did that. And then we did the, uh, the Sasquatch. Wayne was initially doing that, but then that got scrapped and, uh, Joe stepped in and finished it and kind of put his own twist on it. So it wasn't exact, but it was good. And, um, we did the robot. I, I, I noticed there's not yes, a Helder anymore. did that one. Helder, Helder did that, did that one. one. He did a great job on that. And I think his, uh, Miguel did the bass. Miguel Zupo did the bass. Yeah, we did a few Ken Kelly pieces, and they did well. You know, they they did pretty good. I can't complain. But uh, Ken is no longer with us, and, and we did hang out with him. He did he did come to he did come to uh, Wonderfest a couple of times, if I'm not mistaken. I, I, I had, had to have dinner. <laughs> fun, the most fun I've ever had in one night with him, and I didn't even know him. But by the end of the night, we were pals because. Oh, yeah. Well, it started out, I was having, uh, Phil Kupka and I were having dinner in the restaurant. And Ken and Sue came and sat next to us. 
And I didn't say nothing. I knew who it was, but I didn't really say anything. And Phil and I are sitting there, and then, you know, Ken was boisterous. He starts busting on the fucking painting behind me of the horse. Okay. He's East Coast. You know that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so he starts busting on this painting behind me, and so I'm laughing. So we kind of strike up a conversation. And then it turned out later on he was going to sit with Danya and a few others, and him and Danya were on opposite ends of politics, so they'd start back and forth. And uh, I just kind of happened to be there for the start of it, and at the time, and I'll still do it once in a while, once I see a pot stir and I'll start throwing ingredients in and then back it up and seeing what happens. <laughs> yeah, you're very okay. good at that. You're very and good at it. By the end of the night, him and I were busting balls. You know, I told him I wouldn't even let you paint my coloring book, you hack. You know, <laughs> and, and again, he's New York. That's what they want. If they yeah, insult yeah. you, they want it back. I learned that early. Ed Balkley, I figured that out with Ed Balkley. Yep. Okay, because he would bust my balls and I would just take it. I would just take it. And one day I finally say, hey, motherfuck you. Okay. <laughs> and then he just started laughing at me. Okay. That's what he wants. So, you know, <laughs> I learned that. It, it, it's That's what they want. You know, people say, Oh, these New Yorkers. I said, no, you got to give it right back to them. <laughs> yep. And that's, yep. that's that's what they want. But so I had a nice time with Ken that night. And I ended up went and bought a print and had him sign it and stuff. It was it was a it was a good time. I think that was the last Wonderfest he went to, actually. So but um Yep. Yeah. He took the painting class too. He was in the yeah. kid builder's painting class. It was funny. So he's painting the kit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He I, was wonder, a, I wonder if that was the year uh, Dan Jorgensen called Chinksy a boxcar painter. I don't Chinksy know. A boxcar painter. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> I want to so. go back. I'm going to put up the, the keeper kit for a second and the auction block one. That keeper, and I, I know it's a little small on, on our screen, but um, that thing stands to this day. That sculpture is amazing. Like, it could, you could, like. You can't go back and go, oh, that's an old garage kit. Blah, blah, blah. Like that thing looks killer still. Yeah, the I was thinking face. about re I'm thinking about reissuing it. I still have a bunch of certificates signed it. That's I, I, I think I, it's it. <laughs> Yeah, I really, really like that. I think that the anatomy on there is great. It's got that just awesome that's fantasy look. Open. Sideshow came for him right away after that. Really? Okay. Is that where he's oh, at now? Oh yeah. And okay. all over the place. He's done a bunch. Of, he did Rob's Batman. He did my Joker. What I like, John, is your, uh, I don't want to say you're all over the place, but with your subject matter, there was never one, nope. like, okay, like, like Tucky was the classic monsters guy. And, now, and I'm all over the place, man. I want to try everything. So I mean, here's, while you're talking, Scott, keep talking, but I'm going to push. So we got all these things. I was going to say the same thing. I'm just going to push buttons through all this so people can see the variety of what's there. Keep going. Right. So we've got superheroes we've got Terex, we've got rom we've got metal and a mutant, metal and a mutant <laughs> robots and, and we got ultron and we've got annihilus and then but then we'll go to mcgilla gorilla okay yep. Which, you know i had that one on reserve before i even went to wonderfest <laughs> here i said i want one okay and I got a guy that saw mine. He says, man, I really want that. Will you sell that? I'm like, dude, I don't even know if I could ever get another one. So, no, I'm not ever going to sell that. But, I mean, yeah, you were all over the place. And you also did busts. You did full figures. Um, one, not, one eight scale, one six scale, one quarter scale. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I always tell the story about the Kongs. Yeah. Um, when you came out with your Kong, I had just started working on my big one. And they were almost identical poses. And it was like, I was like, fuck, I'm not changing the pose now because he had already started it. Okay. Yeah, but ours is more closer yeah. to like the Aurora one, like as far as the pose. Yes. With yeah, the foot well, and that was kind of, I think we both had maybe the same idea is it was yeah. a little bit of a tribute to the Aurora kit to put the foot up. The one yeah, foot yeah. Up. And, but it was just such a coincidence. I think my left arm's up a little higher than yours. But, yeah, it is. Um, you probably did that after you bought the kit and say, oh, shit. <laughs> no, it was. No, there, there was a one publicity still, and I can tell you what it is, where he's standing. He's got one arm up, and he's got one arm down. And that's why I, I went with the one arm up, because I always liked that still. Uh -huh. And then I said, okay, so bring the other arm down. And then it's like, yeah, let's put the leg up. You know, give it a little movement. And 
I'll never forget you busted my balls when I came out with, oh, you stole my pose. Like, <laughs> I felt so bad because I didn't. That looks familiar. <laughs> but, um, but and, and you know, there's been times, because I'm very particular about my King Kong kits. Uh, and there's been times when I'm going to purge. And I said, well, maybe it's the time to get rid of that Jayco one. And I'll take it out of the box and look at it and go, you know, this is really good. And, no, I can't. And then that goes back into the... <laughs> No, we're hanging on to that one pile. And uh, it was funny. Well, as soon as we debuted it, one of the first people over was Bob Burns. Hey, that con kid, I got to have it. And his wife came over and wrote a check. I was like, all right, cool. Yep. <laughs> More yeah, seniors in checkbooks. <laughs> I bought mine too. And it's in the one video that um, they did. Uh, did he buy Thad's painted one or did he buy a kit? No, kit? he bought a kit. Uh, Tony. He bought a kit of mine too. Yeah. What's Tony's last name? He's friends with Bob. Tony, um, shit. Anyway, Tony, this guy, Tony painted it for him. And, uh, no, the guy that always wanted my build up is a guy. And let me know if you had this experience too, John, the guy that used to set up on the end, he still sets up on the end where Janice was, but he was on the very end cap and he was kind of a King Kong guy. Uh huh. And he bought my first build up of the Kong, the black and white. Was one. that the guy that had the big giant? That the was the, the rubber Martian from Mars Attacks for a couple of years was always standing there. I think I yeah, know who you're talking about. He has like the glass case. Yeah, he has two glass cases on this table all directly the time. across from Scott's buddy. He was I on, th- he was on American he, Pickers too. You know what the funny thing is? I wish I would have found the other Kong picture for you, the one that Louis Vasquez did for me. Um, that was the one him holding a pterodactyl with the base. And I think that guy you're talking about bought that build up off me when I bought it to Wonderfest. Oh yeah, yeah. He 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 always wants to build up, and now I've scanned my big Kong and brought it down to this to the Aurora scale. We'll see how it does, but we'll talk about that later on our segment. But um, mm-hmm. <laughs> although when everybody sees this, we've already talked about it. So yeah. uh, you know, but yeah, it was such a variety. You know, Plastic Man, Iron Man, Morbius. Well, if you notice the sculptors I used. Um, they're a little, they're not, you know, it's, I have nothing against everybody else's sculptors, but I kind of, I kind of try to gravitate towards newer guys coming into the hobby. Like I'm the first one to hire Sam Greenwell, Alterton, Mark Van Tyne, Helder. A lot of guys broke in of the sculpting guys with me and I kind of stayed loyal to them if, as long as I could, you know, and I kind of worked around their styles. Like, uh, I'll never forget the first, that's another story for the first Wonderfest. That's where I met Sam Greenwell. And here comes this guy over to my table. He's carrying a box and he's as quiet as a mouse. And here's his wife taking the sculptures out and putting them on a table. My husband sculpted these. His name is Sam. He's really good. You should hire him. How do you like his work? I'm like, I think it's pretty good. You know, I was like, she was the she was the promoter. Sam was really quiet, didn't say much. I was like, it's so hard. And I, I just admire the fact that his wife is so supportive yeah. of his work. You know I mean? of, and that's the thing like a lot like i'm the same like a lot of artists are really you have your two kinds of artists you have the ones that are braggarts and that's how like that's what sucks about art is if it's all about how you talk to people yeah and if you're great at talking you're gonna make a ton of money you could be the best artist and just be really shy and not be able to go up yeah. to people and you're gonna you're not gonna do as well it's it's the art of bullshit is art it's oh, how yeah. you're able to sell yourself and I hate that about it because people don't, they just want to hear you talk instead of see your work sometimes. And it bugs the crap out of me. Dude, that's why they're watching this mess. I know. <laughs> that's uh, I, I didn't ahead. hire Sam spot. I, uh, I actually sent him. A, I took a video of, of some of my collection and introduced myself on a video. And I sent him a VH te- VHS tape <laughs> and told him I'd be willing to work with him what pieces I wanted. And that's how we started doing them. And I did a bunch of stuff with Sam. I did the first Jaws piece, very successful. The uh, Jim Carrey Riddler, the Shiva from Mortal Kombat. I got to go back. Keep talking. I'll put them up. Um, I know I got the Riddler again. You got the Riddler. Um, I got the Jaws, right? Yeah, he did the Jaws, the first Jaws with the Quint. Okay, no, I don't have that one. Yeah, I gave it. I have the one where he's uh, he's on a. Bro- Brody is by Wayne. I, the Quint okay, one that's by the Sam. one I have, I think. And then I have maybe I have a Quint somewhere. You do have it somewhere. I send it to you. Yeah. It's so all right. Talk because because it's what I do. Um, 
forgot what year it was. Rob was going to buy this Rotocaster, and then you bought it instead. Rob backed out, and you bought it instead. And I'm going to fast forward. I walk into Jersey Fest 2019, and there on John's table is a fucking bus bigger than me. Oh, and I would I would have never got it done if I didn't buy that Rotocast, I can tell you right now. Yeah, and it was of the um for those that don't know, there was a life size Kong that they used in close ups. And it looked totally different from the puppets. Okay. And I'll be honest, it's my least favorite looking Kong. Okay. <laughs> but it's still part of the it's part the, of it's part of the part of the history. Yeah. If you watch that movie, his look changes through the whole movie because they Absolutely. kept repairing the puppet and stuff yep. like that. So anyway, uh, Mick Wood sculpted this, if I'm not mistaken, right? And the picture we got, who painted that one? Was that Lappy? That was Bill Lappy, yeah. That ended Bill up Lappy. getting somebody in Japan. Okay. Um, anybody that uh, doesn't know Bill, Bill's a trip. But uh, we should have another, Bill on one of these times. Another East, fun. another East Coast. Another East Coast. We went to <laughs> high school together. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Bill, yeah. Bill was Bill was good people, man. And... Um, he had a, uh, God, I don't know if I got pictures of it or not, but on John's table, wasn't that where he had the wall with the busts set up yeah, on he, it, too? he made the wall himself for his own self. Right. And then put a Kong bus on it. And he put a bunch of Kong busts on it. Mine wasn't yep. on it, but he's got one now because there was a story there, but he did get one of mine. I wonder if he's going to buy my 3D one. But um, that thing. So th was that your first major? Well, was that your first rotocast piece, or was that just your first shell mold? That was my first shell mold uh, okay. piece, not first rotocast. Okay, and that uh, that was a labor of love, huh? <laughs> Dude, it takes me like three days to make one of those. To this day, I do not even own one for myself. <laughs> the The paint job on this is so good. I love the eyes. It just like just. I forgot well, who was here that I had to show that to. Was it you, Jason? <laughs> was it you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are are those eyes painted? Did you paint that one, or did are those the doll eyes that came with it? And the one if it's the Kong, it's the doll eyes that yeah, came with doll, it. Yeah, yeah. But the paint in general, like it's that is a beautiful looking paint job. Oh yeah, he did a good job. He was very good. He used to compete. What like back in the day, Billy did a lot of build up, did a lot of painting, hand painting. He actually lost to Dave Fisher at that Virginia show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that that Kong, um, you know, for for what it is, I won't say it's the best Kong out there. It's the best. I will say this: it's the best life size Kong out there, as far yes. as from that likeness <laughs> of Kong. Okay, no one else is going to do that again. Not like that. No, and uh, whatever happened to the native? I know there was talks about putting a native in his mouth. And, uh, that just I don't. I think we out. scrapped that for for. Uh... Listen, I don't want people coming after me. Yeah, with yeah, the... yeah, yeah. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. I don't need that hassle. No. Nope. <laughs> I was just watching it last night too. How he put it in his mouth, and the guys like, ah! and then when he when they did the step on scenes, and he step on, he lift his foot up, and the guy'd still be going, ah! and they'd step on him again and turn his foot, and it was just. Oh. <laughs> Fucking classic. I want to go back to a metallic paint job and I'm going to throw it up here for a second. The sure. death lock that Dan yes. Coke did. That Dano is, did it. It's beautiful. beautiful. And he also did the prototype for Bone as well. Man. Yeah. It's too bad he didn't paint the rest of them for Bone because I got to tell you, mine was sloppy. Oh. Well, he did. Well, he did the prototype. He didn't do, you know, right. this was done no. overseas. They're not yeah, going to match. And, and they got sloppy overseas, man, with that they, one. They, they, well, they also put in, if I'm not mistaken, I believe a lot of those eyes are decals on a lot of statues. They're not even painted. Huh. Huh. But Deathlock was one of those characters, and this is what I liked about Bowen, and I, and I like that you kind of started this trend with him, Bowen, and this. Deathlock was one of those characters, first of all, he was only in a handful of comics. I mean, literally a handful. The original Terminator. So... <laughs> if you owned, if you owned maybe twelve or thirteen comics at the time, that was every appearance of Deathlock. Yeah. Okay. So when you look at something like Deathlock in the Man Thing, it's like you didn't think anybody was ever going to do those. Just like, and and I'll give Bowen credit for that. He did some obscure stuff that 
I never thought would get done. I never thought would get done. Well, he was at a point. He was at a point in his career that people were just collecting this stuff for the fact that it was his. Yeah. So he was at, he built himself up to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I got 365 mini busts downstairs. Ah. Uh, and I got 52 of the full size statues. I couldn't collect every statue, but um, I still have 50 of them. I still have like a good 50 of them. Wow. So let's talk about Fluffy. Sure. Fluffy. So, sure. Uh, I have three. I have the two pictures you sent me here, and I think they they were the resolution was coming up really. Uh, yeah, small, so they're find- small. So I put my picture of my built one that was for a friend. Okay, of mine. great. Oh, I can't of course see you did. Later. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> so that's my big one. It was for my friend Adrian, who has since cool. passed away, and uh, so I don't even know what happened to this kit. I think his brother ended up selling it to someone or something, and it really bothers me because I wish I would have got it back. Um, but Talk to us about working with Tom Savini. Yes. Um, once again, met Tom at a Fango show. I used to freak with them often. And it was 2000, it was 90, I think it was, was it 96? Probably about the year they did the man thing. When he did um, Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. Whatever year it was. It was around then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had yeah. Me. I could look that up. And he was promoting, you know, he was promoting that. He had just finished that. He's promoting that. And I, he, he was mentioning to me, because I think somebody had done, if I'm not mistaken, somebody had done some of his stuff, like, you know, some things from his movies, like Day to Day, he saw the bub and this and that. And I heard him saying out loud, like, how come nobody ever hires me to sculpt my work for kids? I said, hey, let's talk. I said, how would you feel about doing Fluffy? 96. You're right. And uh, he said, yeah, I could do that. And I was like, yeah, but what, you know, we started talking prices and stuff like that. And he wasn't, he was, he was reasonable. So um, I gave him a deposit on the spot. And in a couple of months, he had something to show me. He was still doing more film work. So he was working in between it. And the one thing we didn't foresee was he never worked in Sculpey. And the one thing I didn't foresee was if he could sculpt fur or not. Because the fluffy was not, the fur was not sculpted. It was just wrapped around a mannequin. and. Yeah, the head and the, hands, the head and the hands and the feet were sculpted. So we came, you know, we had to find out the hard way that he couldn't sculpt the fur out the way I wanted it, and um, I settled because it was still Tom Savini. No one had, you know, worked with him before, right? And I think, if I'm not mistaken, I found out later on his assistant did the crate. I don't know if he had any sculpting credits on the body, but I know he did the crate. And I just, when I debuted the kid, I, I said, Steve, I was friends with steve park at the time I said steve can you paint this for me and put hair on it so steve put the hair all over the fucking thing the way it was supposed to look with fake hair yeah. so it kind of upset tom <laughs> hey it didn't stop coming to the show to support me and and you know he came to the chiller show Kev, kevin gave him a table he had a guest he had a star whatever and he just he was a little bit he was disappointed with the build-up because he thought i covered his, his sculpt up but I was kind of disappointed with his sculpt because right. I want more fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> but he wasn't a bad guy to work with, you know, and I was happy enough to work with it. And it, it sold well. It did very well. I can't complain. You know, he signed the certificates and this and that. So it was all good. It was a great learning experience. Would I put it back out again? No, yeah. not really. It's, I, it's, I, it's, 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 it's past his time now. And it's it, whoever got it, got it. And that's it. And that's kind of like how I want to talk as a builder and a painter. I think I might even put the wrong feet on the wrong, on the wrong. Cause it didn't. And I, again, this isn't a knock on you. It is. It's sculpted weird when I, when I opened and I was like, what the heck is going on with this thing? And I had painted it recently. It was like 10 years ago, maybe or so. He had a difficult time with Sculpey and separating and everything. He never worked with Sculpey before. Yeah. He's used working with the wet clays for mask and latex and stuff like that. So when I asked him to work in Sculpey, it was a big learning curve for him. But I think in, in the garage kit history of things, it's one of those kits that stands out. It, it, I oh, think yeah. it really is. It definitely is one of those classic garage kits uh, of the time. So, man, was he nice to you, though? No, Tom was cool. Okay. I have no problem. <laughs> he was cool. All right. He has a reputation. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Give us your craziest story out there that that, that you want to share 
just as far as just something crazy that happened either at a show or at the I mean, you know, like I remember we had Sirocco on and he was telling us about Mark Stalick doing the glass eating and all that shit. Um you knew Mark too, I believe, didn't you? Did you know I, I knew I saw him at the show. I didn't I didn't I wasn't uh hanging out with him in bathrooms and watching him do things like that. No. <laughs> I didn't I didn't you know. But uh so, or, or I not even we, a story that involves you, but some weird shit that you've seen at shows or something. I, I mean, can I can I can tell you a very good story from our first Wonderfest experience. Okay, we go to Wonderfest, and uh, it's me, my friend Jerry, uh, Dragons uh, Wolfstand at the time, our sculptor friend Ian, who was a bit off the wall, legally blind, and uh, our friend, my other sculptor Louis Vasquez, who is uh, who is about four foot nine. Very short guy. He actually went to college with Paul Komoda. And um, we go out there, and Lewis is like, man. And he had a very squeaky voice. God love him. He's rest his soul. He passed away a few years ago from cancer himself. And um, he's like, man, I just want to get laid, man. There's got to be some way out here to get laid. And I'm looking. I was like, man, we're in Kentucky. What do you want to do, get arrested? <laughs> so me, Jerry, and Ian. We get in the cab and Ian just says, where's the cat house is at? <laughs> oh, you want to go there? You want to go there? Huh? Okay, I'll take you. So we go to some place and uh, it's closed. Then we go to another place and it says support your local sheriff on the front thing. And uh, I wasn't going in. Neither was Jerry or Ian. Louie was going in. So Jer we're like, Jerry, bring him in. So Jerry's bringing him in. Here comes the cops. And me and Ian are outside. And Ian's dressed like a fucking SS goose step with these big boots, this big long black jacket, have, wearing a Matrix jacket before the Matrix was even thought of. And, you know, he was like, he's just a crazy guy, you know, just staring at the cops like, you know, we're just looking at the cops and the cops saw me there just, thank God, they went by. I was like, I didn't want to go to Kentucky for my first time and be arrested in front of a cat house. How am I going <laughs> to explain my life? So anyway, we waited outside for a long time, you know, and Louie came out and, uh, I said, you better not have went in there for no fucking massage, man, because you almost got arrested out here, you know? He's like, no, man. He goes, look at my wallet. That bitch took everything I had. He opened his wallet. He had no money in it. Ian picks off, starts sniffing his crotch. Let me see. Yeah, I think he had some. He's all right. So we got in the car, went back to the fucking hotel, and that was one crazy. <laughs> Louis oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my gosh. That is too funny. That is a How, good story. So little Louis got laid in Louisville. <laughs> <laughs> Louis, 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 Louis got rolled in Louisville. Yeah. Where do you see everything going? Like, what, what, what is your projection of how this is going to shake out here in the next few years? I think the 3D stuff's going to keep going. People seem to like it. You know, it's more versatile. You can get more finer stuff in it. You know, it has its pluses, but uh, at the same time, like Danny mentioned, uh, it's 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 not going to be anything's collectible. Like yeah. the garage get hot, you know. If I tell you, I'm not bringing something back, it's not coming back, you know. Well, what, meanwhile, you can just pull a file out from 20 years ago and you can print it, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as my part in it, I don't, I don't, I don't see myself, um, personally 3D printing anytime in the future. I just don't have the space. You know, yeah, I have too many molds and stuff like that, and it's a whole new learning curve. I'm sure I could learn it, but I just don't want to right now. I would just hire someone else to do it if I'm going to work with it. Um. As far as guys doing what I'm doing, I see that as a very finite thing. Just because we're all getting up in years and time is precious to all of us, you know what I mean? You know, everybody doesn't have a lot of time. I don't know how many more years guys like me will be doing it, but I see the 3D thing going on for on, on and on. I'm sure at some point, I'd say in the next four or five years, you'll probably be, print, be printing them with paint already on them, different colors and stuff like that. Then the painters will be upset, but I mean, hey, it is yeah. what it is. I think you're, I think you and Dan are right. Uh, Danny are right that none of this will, no 3d print will be collectible. Like they're just, it doesn't make any sense. But when you set out to do this, you set out and, and John, I don't know how it was for you, but I know a lot of guys, they set out to make stuff that they wanted. I mean, you know, yes. that was the beginning of it. I want this. If I can sell enough to maybe fund the next thing I want. Yeah. That that's how it started. Now, it turned into a little bit of a oh I can sell a hundred Frankenstein's so it you got less and less of guys making what they wanted now you know you go to like I we just talked about your selection of models being all over the place 
well, that, that shows me you were still making a lot of things you wanted. It wasn't, yeah. I can sell this. I want to do this. Maybe it was, ooh, like the Ken Kelly thing. Well, maybe I could do something with Ken. Be cool, because Ken's work is cool. And if I can sell them, good. But it's, I don't think anyone set out to make collectibles. Because when you really think about it, when something becomes collectible, not the guy that originally manufactured it that makes the money. Nope. Right. And I think you hit the nail on the head. People, collectibles usually aren't set out to be collectibles. Like that's right. And if it is, generally it doesn't turn out to be. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, the Bradford Exchange, we're only making 10,000 of these. And yeah. And you can buy them on eBay for $3 later on. Now there's exceptions to that stuff like Bowen and stuff like that. Yeah. But it took a long time for some of this Bowen stuff to finally creep up to where you could get what you even paid for it. Okay. Yeah. And there's still stuff in the Bowen line that you can buy for less than it cost. Oh, yeah. But it's like any collectible. But you know what hurt Bowen? is a lot of people recast this stuff. And they even did it with the same style boxes. They did the sideshow as well, too. Mm -hmm. You know, that's hurt a lot because then you weren't even sure if you're getting originals or not. Hmm. I didn't know that. Well, I've seen I've seen Bowen recast, but they weren't painted. So, um... no, I've held it. Held it. Went into. Helda was in Brazil, and there was a whole store with nothing but recasted Bowen stuff, painted, wow. fully painted, in the store, selling them. Wow. And I think Sideshow busted people a few years back with even reproducing their boxes as well. Wow. So uh, the recasts are they're not just after us, they're after everybody. Yeah. I, I've heard of yeah. the Sideshow being recast a lot. I didn't. Well, I know Sideshow, you know, now the scanning is going to come into it and what's going to happen there. Um, And again, just like the 3D printing, there's good that can happen with it. Okay, like I don't look at it as a bad thing in 20 years if someone says, hey, can you print this King Kong for me? Hey, I still got the file. Sure, I'll print you one. Um, But again, if it's a collectible, I'm not making, you know, if I sell something for 100 bucks and 10 years from now it's worth 1000 I don't make that $900 profit. Somebody else did. Yeah. You know, and it's like that with any collectible comics. You know, when you got it, when I got into comics, I got into comics to read. I didn't get into comics for an investment. Yeah. And when I sold my comics, yeah, some of them were worth more and some of them I'm not going to get a quarter for. And that's Mm -hmm. how a collectible market is. Yeah. And that's how this is going to all go down. You know, it's, it's crazy. Like what Janice kits go for is crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. So it's how do you know? You know, it, and the whole thing is you got even at the shows now, you got a lot of guys just emptying in the closets. So, you yeah. know, guys like me trying to produce new stuff has to compete with that. And it's not easy because they have a lot of gems. Speaking yep. of which, what kind of what new stuff you got coming out? If people wanna people want to get a hold of you. What's the best place to find you? What do you got coming out? Cool new stuff, anything in the works kind of thing? Nothing scheduled right now. I still gotta get that uh Lilith painted. I'm still working on that. I've just been so sidetracked yeah. and everything. Um, I got nothing slated. I want to reissue the Cyclops bust. I wanna I got a couple of heroes I gotta redo. But um resinrealities.net is where you'll find me most of my stuff. And um the heroes I do not put on my website. <laughs> For good reason. It's For a fun- Facebook. Obvious pre-discussed reasons. <laughs> There's no secret password that you'll never get. Yeah. You just have to find me on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> take, take that, Rob. No password to get into his website. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> well, I want to thank you for joining us. This has been great. I, I'd love to have you back and just kind of shoot the shit again. This has been fun. Um, oh, absolutely. And thank you for what you've done to, for the hobby. There's you've You've been there for a very long time. You've put out some amazing stuff. Without you, things would be very different. So thank you for everything. Customer service-wise, service I've never heard anyone say, hey, that John Diaz guy never sent me this kit. <laughs> or, True. I, True. No, I, wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be here 32 years if I did. <laughs> Man. So, uh, but seriously, yeah. thank you for everything. Thanks, guys, for having me on. I had a good time. Oh, it's, it's been awesome. So thank you. That was Mr. Diaz. Resin Realities, guys. Uh, again, thank you to John for coming on. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate coming on and what he's done for the hobby. Like, he's been around 
pro- for a very long time, 32 years, I think he said, uh, and tons of different kits. And I think you brought it up in the interview. He does what he likes. It is not, I'm sticking to one thing and that's my thing all over the place with subject matter. And I think that's really cool that he's done it that way. So and I, I like what he said about, uh, you know, helping out up and coming sculptors too, that, yeah, you know, no one had heard of. And then, um, like Roberto and now all of a sudden, boom, you know? Yeah. So. Man. It, thanks. Thank you, John. I, it means a lot to come on. So thank you. Uh, are we ready? We're the best ready. part of the show. Emails, voicemails, and corrections. All right, we have two voicemails. I don't think we have any corrections. We probably do, but whatever. Uh, Both of these uh, voicemails are from the AI again, and I'm trying to understand, but here we go. This is Allison AI for YouTube. Your subscriber growth is declining. You can bribe people with gifts and money to bring up your numbers if you choose, goodbye. Well, we have been bribing people <laughs> with giveaways. So. Kind of works. And then one more. This is Allison AI for YouTube. Your last live stream was lazy, inadequate, and poorly situated. Please do better next time, Mr. Walker. And if you don't, you will be further demonetized by YouTube and Shadow Man. That is all. I Goodbye. Think, uh, all right. I, I think I'm already Shadow Banned on a couple things. So I don't. What is Shadow Banned? Shadow Banned is when they don't. If you post something, it doesn't go out to other people. So it looks like you posted it, but it's not propagated throughout your friends. It's pushed down. It's not pushed out to everybody. And I've noticed when I post YouTube links on my personal page, I get no reactions to them sometimes. And I think I've been put on a list of when this guy posts YouTube links, don't, don't show them to people. All right. So we're, we're at 1.27 thousand. Yeah. Drivers. So it doesn't look like we're going down. No. Yeah. We're going up. We're going up, baby. So again, thank you to everyone who has subscribed to the show. Please subscribe if you haven't, if you made it this far today. Uh, yeah, we, I, have, I was going to mention that we are at 1,270, and that's crazy to me. So thank you again to everybody who has been Hey, Hey, Allison, we're going up, up, up yeah. yours. Okay. <laughs> so we're exactly. getting there. So Hey, out of focus. God, we got to get a new camera for you or something. I don't know what's going on. I'm allowed. Maybe I just have to not move. Um, maybe. Ah, stay out of focus. You have that uh, Sybil Shepherd kind of Vaseline on the lens look to make you look younger and prettier from moonlighting that they would shoot her with. You know, I thought she was hot. Yeah, she was. I have that whole series on DVD. I haven't watched it. I've had it. I, I, I got, okay. I got to edit this out. <laughs> That's a I've ever heard. What? <laughs> I'm going to leave that. I'm going to bleep it. What? You have like moonlighting, moonlighting on DVD? Out of everything we talk about, you have moonlighting on DVD. The whole series. Yep. It was good. Especially the first two, three seasons were really good. Good grief. See how it works. Oh, my God. What? Nothing. Go Nothing. Watch more Oak Island. Go watch them dig up more shit than ain't there. Hey. Oak Island's great. No, we're not. We can get into an Oak Island. <laughs> Let's go. Go watch more wrestling. Go watch more. Scripting. Hey, Royal Rumble's this weekend, everybody. Royal Rumble. Yeah, well, it, it, it will be Jason after does. this. You'll, when you see this, Royal Rumble will have happened. All right. All right. So I have emails. I have a couple emails that fell through the cracks that they moved off the main page and we did our live show. So I'm going back. And the gallery of this episode has some older ones that kind of fell through the cracks that are going to be put back in. So I have a couple emails that are older. They're from the beginning of December that we didn't have for the live show. So here we go. This is from Roy Barrow. Hi, guys. Happy holidays. <laughs> yeah. uh, so here's why I build and paint model kits. I'm retired now. I've been building kits since I was six years old. 
A few years ago, I had to buy a shed to house my vast collection of toys and models. This past year, I finally produced my first original kit. The point is, I love the hobby. I love to build and paint kits, not just resin kits, but plastic and vinyl too. In truth, it's my zen. When I'm painting in my own little zone, I am not thinking about ills or pains. I paint every day. I strive to improve my skills all the time. I've been painting in the hobby for over 60 years, and I've seen many changes in the hobby, both good and bad. I've been fortunate to meet and become friends with some of the titans of the industry. I just feel so blessed to have been able to hang out with so many like people at Wonderfest and Jersey Fest and other shows. These days, as my body gets older and restricts my movements, I'm glad to I'm able to still build and paint kits. I have so many kits in my stash, I'll think I'll be happily hanging out in my studio until my gray old days. You've been doing this <laughs> in 60 years. You're in your gray old days, man. What are you talking about? I love your show and I never miss an episode. Thank you so much for showing my painted kits on your show. Onward to 2024 and see you at Runderfest. Thank you, Roy. And thank you for sending things in all the time. I love it. You're a great painter. And I, I, I love when you send stuff in. And thanks for calling us Titans of the Hobby. Yes. Wait. I what's like, be a Titan. What's like the opposite of a Titan? Like, uh, what's it? Can we say midget? <laughs> I don't think you can say it and get away with it. Yeah. Right. Well, I think we're the, probably the opposite. So, no, that's a great email. And I think. Dwarf. Midget. Peewee. Pygmy. Peewee's a. Peewee's a. <laughs> half pint. Might. Pygmy. So, uh, you want more? No, that works. We're one of those. <laughs> Everyone pick their favorite. I'm right. sure I'm sure Spike will find something. Yeah. Jason's 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 got a <laughs> pygmy pee pee. Okay. <laughs> or I've got a Okay. Stop. Double stop type. right there. Stop right there. All right. This was the email I was looking for from Dan Cherney. He had sent two in. This was one that got pushed off that page when we did our this from December as well. So this is a great email. Bear with me. And he I love how he like can you see that? He puts like them in sections and then yeah, it makes it big enough so you yeah. can fuck it up. I, reading it. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for appreciating that. All right. From Dan Cherney. What's the point? This is from, well, I'll read the first sentence on the pretty depressing December 15th show. You asked what's the point? And he posted, he sent this on defense December 15th. So he sent it right after, uh, I can only answer for myself since model building is a mostly a solo journey. But I thought this was a good question to at least ponder for a few minutes. So I came up with five categories about what the point is for me, underlined. For what it matters, I'm 65 years old, spent a good part of my life as an art teacher and illustrator. Now I'm retired with lots of extra hours and a lot more creaks and groans from a body I still wish was 20. Creativity. After teaching in both public schools and other venues, I have come to believe that each of us craves some outlet for those creative things bubbling inside of us. Model building makes this easy to see and observe, but we also see it in woodworking, sports, cooking, and even the way we decorate our living areas. There will always be a certain magic to opening a box or bag of loose and seemingly unrelated parts and then produce a figure or something recognizable from the pile. So creativity has to be one of the points of the hobby. Nostalgia. We, are, we were all young once, and many of us still hold close the feeling of opening a brand new 98-cent Aurora Long box or some hero or creature we saw on the silver screen. Why else would people pay 25 to 100 for empty boxes and reproductions? During more innocent times in my life, I constructed monsters, working model rockets, and even scale model lighthouse that lit up. Those were great days, and some of that magic still twinkles when I open a new kit or paint some extra detail well. For those reasons, and others, nostalgia is another point of why I do what I do. Can I uh, jump in there? Sure. Um, I, I have to almost say that while there people out there enjoy the building and the painting and all that, I think the nostalgia is a major part of it for a lot of them, okay? And for whatever reason, you're a little younger, so 
I don't think you have it quite as bad as people older than you because it started to wean off to where it is now. I don't think the kids today will ever have the nostalgia. If they do, it'll be for way different things like video games and stuff like that. I don't even think they'll have that. But the baby boomers just came along at the right time. Okay. And the amount of cool stuff that came out, you know, just when you didn't have all this, hey, you're going to blow your eye out and all the safety regulations and all that. And that, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying that it's, it was a different, almost more magical time for us. So it is very nostalgic. So I, I have to agree with him 100%. Okay. This one I kind of agree with. <laughs> In lieu of another addiction. Without model building, I'm sure I would have filled that void with alcohol, drugs, gambling, or any number of negative habits. All without not so great outcomes. Or maybe I'd be at the bowling alley hanging out with a, at a pub or wasted after rock concert number 187. Model building is a positive hobby and yielding positive results. And I and others thank the universe our hours are not filled with something much more negative or even dangerous. Models are one of those good addictions in life. Now, I am living proof that you can be addicted to models and bad habits at the same time. Um, but I agree with him 100%. I really think this helps. Like, if you want to keep kids out of trouble, if you give them, get them hooked on Warhammer, they're not going to have money for anything else. Like, because that stuff's so expensive, they'll be spending their money on, on that instead of bad things. But I agree 100% there. Um, but it also, we can also say that this hobby can't, like, you can get addicted to this too in a bad way and keep buying and spending money that you don't have. Because I've been in that boat too. Like, I've spent money on models I should have spent in other places. Filling social holes in my hey, you life. You lost me at filling holes. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Filling social holes in my life. While model building is mostly and mainly a solitary event, it also had its wider social addition additions from Wonderfest to Discord meetings and watching Model Club TV to showing your collection off to a new friend. Modeling brings us closer to people with similar interests. This subject goes a lot deeper because I'm not even sure I have met those I have met through this hobby recognize how important they are to me. So filling social holes is another important point. Magnifying wider interests. Model building magnifies other interests, whether that is that is movies and pop culture or race cars and historical events. Maybe it's a great likeness of an icon we saw at the movies or a highly detailed model of a race car we saw win the big race. This hobby helps to magnify our other interests, which in turn widens the people who we see and enjoy the work of the model builder. The modeling, modeling taught me how rockets work where the organs of the body are and what color Frankenstein's monster's skin really was after all. Modeling can make the world easier to understand and magnify your wider interests. From the brain of a 65-year-old model builder, Dan Cherney. I, bravo, sir. I, I think that nails it, and it helps reduce the doom and gloom <laughs> that I am accused of. But I think that is an amazing email. Dan, you always send in great ones. I'm sorry it took so long to get to that one, but here we are. So thank you and keep them coming. Cause I, I Dan sent right. both of us a Christmas card this year and it was with a nice letter inside to both of us. And, um, uh, I got it. And, um, you know, again, he, he just said he, he was a teacher and all that. And I got this, this envelope and it's like addressed, like so crazy. And I'm like, who the hell sent this? And here's the difference um, in art teacher. I have the worst handwriting. in the history. <laughs> and um, so, you know, and then I opened it, it was Dan or I saw the return address, but you know, it was just the, you know, he put the effort into it and um, yeah, Dan is a great guy. Yeah. He's uh, been here a couple times. And um, if you ever get a chance to meet him in person, stick around. He's got good stories. He really does. Like he's a good dude getting kicked out of building and, and going back to like expanding your like so many people i have met through this show i consider like i said before it's like family it's just there's some really good people we've met through this show and some old people like today like john getting to talk talk to john you never like at a show everyone's so busy sometimes it's hard to talk to people 
and you get to talk mm-hmm. to people here and find out what makes them tick. And I love that about this show. So, all right. This is from Jeff Holt. And let me get to the picture. <laughs> oh boy. Saw this on a recent toy collector video. Best wishes, Jeff. And it says Jason immortalized. It's the advanced Dungeons and Dragons action figure. Kellic evil Pretty sorcerer. Funny. And you know what? I'm not gonna lie. That's kind of what I'm going for. <laughs> like that's that's what I all like, yeah, you're right. You you caught me. I'm not gonna lie. So that I used to have some of these action figures. So that's I love it. Thank you, thank you, Jeff. That's so cool. Uh, and then I had uh, you know, can I can I go back to action figure? I want to say something. Yep. So you know, you look at something like this, and you look at action figure collecting today, and it's it's become almost a hobby in itself. You know. Yeah. To where. They leave things been on the card and, and stuff like that. When I was a kid, having figures to to play with, okay, they were not monsters, so I would play with my Aurora monsters or my little Palmer plastic models monsters, and um, later on, Mego uh, superheroes and Planet of the Apes. I had some of that stuff, GI Joes, but it involved you using your imagination. Yeah. Okay. And so I don't think kids are buying action figures now. Maybe they are, but not like it was. To um, I used to set like like Legos. They buy Legos, but they buy Legos in these sets, and they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong; they're beautiful sets. But you put them together and you put them on a shelf. It's like a model kit almost. Okay. And that's it. There's no like when we were kids and Legos came out. You got this box of square things. Make something. Make something. Okay. Yeah. Make something. Really. And and that's what you did. Well, you I know? used to do that with because I had like my Godzilla, my Shogun Godzilla, my Shogun Rodan, my Clash of the Titans Kraken, and some mm-hmm. other like I had like a Ming the Merciless, like all these like monster toys, and I would set them up and play with them all the time, and make my mm-hmm. own monster island out of the Afghan blankets and stuff. Like that's what I did. Yeah. Like kids well, and 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 I don't know if you had them because. Or by by the time you grew up, they were starting to do different things. Wooden blocks, okay. Yeah, I would build shit out of wooden all the blocks time. for for Hot Wheels and Matchbox cars. Wooden and... blocks, and then the things that I loved when I was were bristle blocks that kind of fit together, like and they stuck together. They weren't like Legos, mm-hmm. but I would build stuff yeah. out of those all the time. Yeah. So I mean, but again, it was imagination. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Where. Like video games to me are just so they're scripted. Okay. I mean, yeah. it's not that they're not fun. Some, some are, there's others that are total open world. You make your own stuff. That's the cool thing. There are some video games where you're mm-hmm. building things with other, like Minecraft. Like that's what Minecraft is. You're building stuff. Um, I have an email from Ken Kolinsky and I want to say thank you to Ken for sending this in. He had won the Christmas presents that we sent out, like the Christmas gifts for kids. Um, we can't show the picture because there's kids in the picture, but I want to say made me smile to see them happy with those things. So thank you for uh, sending that in. And I wish we could show it. We could we put a black, like the black bar across their face, but then it'll look creepy. So I don't want to do that. Anyway, we have an email from Mike Zizek, and this is the last one. It's kind of, it's long, not long, but complicated. And I, it made me wonder why, about why are there are big words in it. You're going to have to read. You're such a bastard. All right. From Mike Zizek. Okay. Stay with me here. I had a wild idea that I wanted to run by you. It is nuts and impossible, but what a great thing if it worked. Wonderfest sub contest for 2025. Raise money for charity. Whatever cause is selected. The great sculpt off Jeff Le- Yeager, Lace Lee, Chris Elizardo, Tony Cipriano, Mark Van Tyne, Joe Ladotti, uh, Cthulhu Gizzard, John Dennett, you'll winner. The list goes on and on. The catch: a blind vote off, so no one knows who sculpted what until the close, the close of the contest. Pick something small they could sculpt without taking too much time away from their professional lives, like a Christmas ornament or magnet for the fridge. Say no larger than four by four. Horror Santa, evil reindeer, sweet cherub. Who cares? Buckets in front of the sculpts, so you can you cannot see how much is inside to influence your decision. The most money wins the prize. What is it? 
Who knows? Maybe dinner for two, a nice restaurant, or a six pack of Coke, whatever. The point is, a charity gets a bump in their donations, a sculptor flexes their muscles and has fun doing it, and the fans get to see a ton of great new sculpts, no online BS, no skewing the results by name recognition, just raw votes by the attendees and vendors. The second best parts, the sculptors will still own their products, so if they wanted to sell them afterwards, awesome. Sell the digital files, why not? The point is they still own whatever they sculpt and can do whatever they wish once the contest is over. Does Tony Cipriano want to dip his toes into digital file sales? Why not start with this? If it doesn't work or he gets screwed, he's only out a trinket file, not a kit sculpt. Does a vendor want to enter into an agreement to produce the sculpts? A partnership? Up to them. Does the artist want a true one-off never to reproduce if they wish? But the great sculpt off might inject some life into our hobby and energize the artist. If you made it this far, thanks. Some ideas hit me and I have to get them out or they will eat my brain. Have a good one. Mike. Why has there never been a sculpting category? Well, that's interesting. And it's almost like what he's suggesting is almost like sculpting club. I was okay. going to say the same thing. All so right, that so is j- almost exactly what we did for model club, the contest, but this would be sculpting. Um, I think it'd be hard to get these guys to do it. I really yes. do. I, <laughs> I, think, I think it would be impossible. Would. Um, I know there's guys that would be like pulling teeth. So it's, um, we couldn't get, we barely got people to do the modeling part of model club to yeah, get the sculptor but, guys to do it. But I, but honestly, why was there never a sculpting category? Like, a rich, best original sculpt for a garage kit at Wonderfest. New that year or something, you know? Like, and there's a lot of categories. There's the thing, though. They have so many categories and they're so stretched in. And, but I'm not and, talking about now. I'm talking yeah. like from the beginning. Like, why wasn't that? Well, like. I, I would have liked to see a category out of the box category. Okay. Just to see what can you do out of the box? Yeah. And years ago, Matt Clemens had a, what I thought was a fun idea when they were reissuing stuff like crazy to get a shit ton of the like Frankenstein reissues and a set of testers paints and testers brushes and thinner and say, here you go. You got two hours to build this like you did when you were 13 years old. The only caveat would have been you get to use crazy glue instead of regular glue because you would have to wait yeah. for it to dry. Okay. And see what these guys could do. I'd be up for that. In a short period of time. I would totally be up for that. Okay. That would be fun. Yeah. Okay. That, that would be. Maybe we could lot. just do that on the show. Where like you don't have to worry about. You know, if you did styrene kit, you wouldn't have to worry about steam seaming something. You know, or if you just did a bust, you wouldn't have to necessarily. You know, you don't want to put too much into it, like seaming and and stuff like that. Just kind of like, and even if you didn't do it like old style, you know, with the old style enamel paints and stuff, then fine. Then do it with use acrylics. No, everybody I, I no, 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 no. But everybody would get the same palette of acrylics. I think okay. everyone would need no for that contest to be awesome. You could use plastic cement. I don't remember Matt talking about this. And then you would have to use the little jars of testers and the shit brush that came with it. Yeah, that's what I meant. The shit tester brushes. With the square with the flat with the flat tip. And and we'd give you shit like toothpicks. Yeah. And well, uh, we're oh dude, this might be our next contest. I think we might do it. Let's work, let's think about this. But a time limit. A time limit, yeah. Like, okay, like a two-hour time limit. Like, here well, it is. Nah, well, I say we have to do a month. Like, you'd have to have it in in a month or something. Like, we'd announce it, have it turned in. You work out. Well, see, much- I, I think it would be fun to do it a show. Like, if you were gonna run. Well, a room, no, yeah, a room, that would be because that's what. And then say, okay, three, four hour. You get four hours. But this brings me back to being mad at Wonderfest for them not wholeheartedly supporting Model Club. Because that's as cool, and in my opinion, not model club, but that idea, I think, is just as cool as the Iron Modeler thing. And, and know, that and Iron Modeler gets so much promo. Yeah. And I have to credit Matt Clemens. Yeah, Matt. Was, yep. It was kind of his 
thought yeah. get that going. So uh, I'd love to do that. We could do it in the suite. Because we got the suite with... It would be easier if you had a, a room. Yeah. Like I said, everyone got the same palette of paint. Yeah. Okay. And um, the same brushes and the same... You could do you the know. 10X pa- plastic welder because that stuff dries pretty cr- quick. Mm-hmm. Dude, I like this idea. Let's work on it. All right. That's the show, everybody. Uh, please like, subscribe. Head on over to the Discord. All that stuff's below. Uh, if you'd like to send us an email, because I haven't pushed any freaking buttons today, an email, modelclubtv at gmail.com. If you'd like to send us a voicemail, it is 708 816 4299. Until next time, everybody. The contest? Remind about the contest. Sheer Terror Society. Um... Put your favorite William Paquette kit to win in, winter uh, phase comments two. to win that bad boy and the signed card. Yep. Here we go. If All right, everybody. No tea on it. Oh, no, I put it over there to be safe. I'm like, where did I put it? <laughs> I already forgot. All right. Next time. See you. Say goodbye, Scott. Oh, goodbye.
Mm. All right. Um, the first thing up, we uh, Paul brought this up to me the other day, and to make sure we brought it up here. Um, Mark Van Tine went in for a procedure. What did you just do to ruin the Van Tine? Bounced out. You didn't hear that? Yeah, I did. Hear? Jesus Christ. Uh, Let me start over. All right, let's start over. I'm going to have one more cookie. Then I'll be ready. Great. All right, I'm going to hold the booth and walk through. What, friend? You see her? Mm hmm. Good, good girl. Oh, girl. Where's the okay. other dog feeling jealous? 